It's 8 o'clock on today. Coming up, terrifying images, breaking news out of Japan. A passenger plane ignites into a massive fireball after a collision with another plane. Everyone on board able to safely evacuate while the death toll rises from that powerful New Year's Day earthquake. The search intensifying for people buried beneath the rubble. We'll have the very latest on both of those developing stories. Plus, on the rise, health officials now concerned with a post-holiday spike in respiratory illnesses from RSV to the flu to COVID. We do expect cases are going to rise. Hospitalizations are going to rise well in uh, to the end of January. What you need to know. Then taking charge. It's that time of the year to pay up. And we've got some tips and tricks to tackle those holiday bills before the payments are due. And more in 24 from J-Lo and Ben Affleck's romantic embrace to Hugh Jackman's dip in the ocean. A look at how the stars celebrated the new year. I just want to remind us that just because we got things we want to change does not mean that we can't also look back and appreciate some of the things that maybe we pulled off in the past. As we kick it off right today, Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024. Yeah. Starting 2024 at the Today Show. From Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Lake City, Texas. Ole Miss, New Mexico. And Bismarck, North Dakota. Celebrating our 20th anniversary. From Sebring, Florida. We're on a mother daughter trip. From Oconia, Minnesota. Besties on a bucket list trip. From Running PA. From Montezuma Creek, Utah. Today is my dad's 50th birthday. It's Mackenzie's 13th birthday. How did my brother's call in Finley? Watching in South Bend, Indiana. Good morning to my grandma. In Bakersfield, California. We're back, 8-12 now, and this morning on today's Consumer Call It, the, the holiday hangover mm -hmm. after a season of gift giving and trips and tips. Uh, you might be carrying a little more debt than usual. we got some tips on how you can tackle those holiday bills. Our senior business correspondent, Christine Romans, is here. Christine, first of all, Happy New Year. Happy Good New to year. see you. I think a lot of people are probably peeking at their bills right now saying, why did I yeah. do that? What? is the average bill that a lot of Americans are seeing this morning. So first of all, America, we got this. Yeah. We got this. Yeah. We can do this. We can do this. It's the beginning of the year. Look, it's about a trillion dollars in credit card debt even before wow. this holiday season. And holiday sales were up about 3%, a little more than 3%. So Americans are still spending the typical typical family spending just shy of a thousand bucks for holiday gifts this wow. year. So that's a lot of spending. People, yeah, are, spending. people are out there, people yep. are shopping. But if you do want to try and tackle this holiday debt right now, what are some of the first steps mm -hmm. that you should take? Knowledge is power. Okay. You got to know what you owe and you have to be brutal about it. You got to get in there and figure out exactly what you owe from the holiday season, how much you overspent and make, and figure out how you're going to pay for it. Don't forget um, to pay the high interest rate credit cards first uh -huh. at 20.6% for the average credit card interest rate. That's this the is, average rate, right? Yeah, 20%. This is not the time to be leaving a little balance and rolling it over. You need to pay it off. And you can't just pay the minimums because the minimums will keep you in debt for years. So really be serious about this. And don't forget the buy now, pay later loans. Some people, millions of people, have bought uh, bought their, their uh, mm -hmm. uh, presents on buy now, pay later. So mm -hmm. they've already paid a few of these payments. So they might actually be a little bit ahead. And find the money. You know, pay the balance. Don't, not just the minimum, and you can sell or trade gift cards. Oh, There's a couple oh. of good sites. Do you know the yeah. half of gift? No. Did you guys get gift cards? Oh, every year. This yeah. is his go-to. That's, that's his staple. Oh, yeah. So half of gift cards never get used. Do oh, you know makes, that? That makes me feel <laughs> <laughs> It's a wonderful gesture, Craig, but somebody's got one of your gift cards and will never use it. So if you are having trouble paying the bills, you can go to a couple different sites. There's one called raise.com and cardcash.com. You can get 70 cents or 80 cents on the dollar, but use those to help pay down your credit that's card bill. I think something important that you kind of touched on here is making a plan for it because yeah. I think a lot of people want to stay stiff arm their bills, yep. but you really do have to game it out exactly how you're going to tackle it. That's exactly right. And this year is different. This isn't like the normal blase or benign neglect yeah. on your credit card. I mean, you've got, you've got 20% store cards are 30%. So you've got to make a plan. 44% of people are still paying off debt from 2021 at 20% interest. That is just a debt spiral. I, I don't mean to be so negative because I do think we have this under control, yeah. but 
but just make sure you know what you're paying. This is also the best time of the year to tackle debt. It's a fresh start, yeah. New Year's resolutions and all that. And then I would say revisit again when it's your birthday and sit down and really figure out or halfway through the year or another time. But just you don't want to be carrying those balances. You make a good point as well. You maintain that you, you can also call the credit card company. Have a conversation with your lenders. Yeah. And you call them and you say, look, uh, this rate is 20 percent. Can you lower it for me? You can see I've got a good payment history. Mm -hmm. And there was a lending tree uh, study a year or so ago that found that 76 percent of people were able to lower their credit card rate by an average of six points. So that takes 20 percent to 14 percent or 30 percent, you know, down into the 20s. But 20% interest on credit cards. Crazy. That's because the Fed was raising those interest rates. Yeah. This, the whole point was to make it more costly to borrow money. It is costly to borrow money. Now we're paying it back. So consolidating. A lot of people think if I just pull it all together, it may be helpful. So you can find these 0% um, yeah. balance transfers. Just be super careful. Again, you have to have a plan. Yeah. A lot of people consolidate or transfer to a yeah. zero balance, and then they're in the same problem they were in the beginning. So you got to look at what you're spending, what you're making, what the cost is to service the debt, and just make a plan, and you can get through it. And is there anyone who can help you make a plan? Because I think some people don't know even yeah. how to start that. Um, the National Foundation for Credit, credit Counseling, you can go to bankrate.com and see like what your credit score is yeah. and how you can borrow money, what these you know zero balance transfer cards are. But you don't want to just keep moving the money around, yeah. you know, like you got to figure out what are the behaviors that are causing yeah. you to have uh, too much debt. And for some people, it's not behavior, it's inflation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they have more debt now because everything costs, costs a little more. bit more. Yep. So, uh, you know, every and year they I want try to, to get their kid the present. So no. that's where they I have keep trying to get my boys. Let's all make each other something. And you cannot believe this. <laughs> I'm sure they don't want that. Nobody no. wants anything made by me for Christmas. <laughs> all right, Christine. Thank, thank you. you. Nice to see you guys. If you're heading out the door, don't forget, check us out. Today's show, Radio Sirius XM Channel 108. Best time of the year because it's the right. first, it the first. Pop start of the Let's year. Go. Good stuff to start off today. Thank you, Uncle Al, for that warm introduction. <laughs> it is Pop Start. Happy New Year's Eve. Let's keep the celebrations going. Let's look at some of how your favorite celebs rang in the new year. We'll start with your buddy, J. Lo Hoda. Mm -hmm. Make sure she was in St. Bart's with her husband, Ben Affleck. They posted the sweet snap of them taking in the fireworks. We're going to be seeing a lot more of J. Lo in the new year because this is me now is an album and a film that's coming out oh, in February. Good yeah. to see those guys happy and hanging out. Another iconic power couple, Faith Hill and Tim McGraw. They shared this throwback oh, wow. photo on Instagram, simply captioned 1999 and still that's going cool. strong. Ooh. Wow. Hugh Jackman made a splash with his little chilly celebration, deciding to take a cold plunge. Ooh. I'm assuming that's the Atlantic Ocean. Al, you might be able to tell more. Uh, Concerning he was brisk. just here in Rock Center. Yeah, what is that, about 42 degrees, yeah. that water? Oh. Shrinkage. Sure. The shrinkage, right sir. Oh, yeah. thank you. Hello. <laughs> I didn't have to do it. <laughs> and while the season of Mariah, it's like one brain. You guys share it. It's amazing. <laughs> The season of Mariah may be slowing down, but the Queen of Christmas gave us one more memorable moment for the year, sharing her 2024 resolution writing, New Year, New Beginnings, taking a picture from my bad side. Oh. Really? She has a bad side? I, no, I don't think so. Not. I don't no. think so. No. For her. Maybe she does. No. I don't think so. I think so, actually. Now I that I recall so. TRL, I think we had a lot of... <laughs> 
time spending lighting a certain oh, way, wow. very particular oh, about yeah. it. I think that's okay. one of people's like, heads. You look yeah. at everything. Yeah, no, she's beautiful. She's a beautiful woman. And we are back at 836 with a new series to begin the new year, A Day in the Life. Yeah, it's all about celebrating the lives of ordinary people who, in their own ways, are quite extraordinary. We're going to start off with someone who plays a very pivotal role, and we're talking about, Craig, a public school teacher. Oh, yeah. So this one was close to home for me because I'm, I'm the son of a school teacher. My mother-in-law was a school teacher. So when we decided to shadow an individual for a day, it seemed like a natural fit. Ryan Hardesty teaches outside Pittsburgh, and we found his average day to be anything but. We also found it to be emblematic of millions of educators all across this country. Every day across America, they rise before many of us. 6.15 in the morning here in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. We're about to knock on the door and tag along with the teacher for the day. Hey, good morning. What's up, Ryan? Craig uh, Melvin. Nice to meet you. Ryan Hardesty and his wife, Melissa, Melissa have two sons, Ben and Grayson, still sleeping. Oh, uh, hi, Melissa. <laughs> it's your neighbor, Craig. <laughs> this reminds me of when I was a kid. Yeah. My mom was a teacher. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So That's she, awesome. was, she was up at O'Dark 32. So as soon as you get in, it's ground running. Yeah, usually um, by the time I drop my son off to get at the babysitter to catch the bus and then... Uh, kind of run in the door, and usually the kids are there within five or 10 minutes. Soon, we're on our way. Well, what's this area like? Really close-knit community, supportive of the kids, supportive of the school. Hardesty drops his seven-year-old son, Ben, off, and we reach Highland Middle School by 743. This is the office, huh? This is it. Us and, what, 800 of our closest friends. Teaching here was his first job out of college. He's been here 15 years and goes to great lengths to keep his kids engaged in the social studies lessons he teaches. For his work, he was selected by the Pennsylvania Department of Education as the state's Teacher of the Year in 2023. This is very quiet. It's like yeah. Calm oh, before the just storm. Gonna say that. The storm starts at 8:30 with the first class of seventh graders. The dim lights are a sign of the times. Interactive whiteboards replacing the chalkboards of my day. Each student also has a tablet provided by the school. Right now, they're studying everyday life in ancient Egypt. Part one says you're going to create a narrative, a story. He hovers, advises, trying to get them to build on what they've learned. The second class starts with morning announcements and the Pledge of Allegiance. With liberty and justice for all. Hardesty stays put in room 203 while students move in and out. After two classes of the Pharaohs, he moves on to Lewis and Clark for a class of eighth graders at 10 a.m. There's a lot of participation in Mr. Hardesty's class, moving desks, forming teams to work on projects together. 1045 is study hall. Some students passing the time with cards invite me to play war. I haven't won a hand yet. At 12.15, Hardesty gets a half hour for lunch. He spends it in the teacher's room. He may be the teacher of the year, but Hardesty insists many of his colleagues are more deserving of the award. Next, prep period, when we find some time to talk. When did you realize that you, you actually wanted to teach? I think in high school, uh, yeah, you look at good social studies teachers that you had, and you think, I, I think I'd really like to do that. To be a teacher, it's... A little bit about liking the subject that you want to teach, but it's a lot more about wanting to work with kids. How has it changed in, in the 15 years you've, you've been teaching? In the years immediately after COVID, I think you were seeing students just struggle to be in a space with other people and be surrounded by other people all day and be in a chair and a desk and listen to instruction all day. Classes resume at 125 and finish with dismissal at 245. The fleet of yellow buses rumble off in formation. Hardesty picks up his son at his school. Oh! Oh, hi, Ben! At 4.15, Hardesty helps Ben with his homework, followed by playtime in the backyard. After, we sit down with Ryan and Melissa. She's an educator, too, a speech pathologist. You both spend all day working with children that aren't your own, and then you come home and you have two small boys. <laughs> You're surrounded by children every day, all day. Yeah. How do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we really enjoy it. It's definitely hard. You know, the mental load, it can be a lot. But it's also really rewarding to get to 
watch kids grow. One day, if, if one of the boys comes to you and they say, you know what? I want to go into education. I want to be a teacher. What would you say? Be honest. I think I'd say go for it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a great profession. I think it's a great opportunity to make a difference. The day winds down with family dinner at 628, followed by a bedtime story. A final lesson before the day is done. I so enjoy the, the oh, hardest. Cool. By the way, what's really cool, hmm. they teach in, in the town where they grew up. Oh my God. Oh, that's, that's their hometown? Cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, by yeah, the they, way, I love how he dresses up in all those uh, outfits. Oh, yeah, to, yeah. I, you get why he's teacher of the year, too. Yeah. Yeah. Very it's still just mind boggling. Yeah. Teachers don't make the same yeah. as doctors. Know, it's crazy. It's mind boggling. Yeah. They're, it is they're ridiculous. responsible for that's our greatest yes. resource. Yeah. The greatest yeah. assets we have are young people, and they're there in the thick of it, spending their own money. Yeah. By the way, most teachers, and you know, we have a lot of folks on the couch who've got connections to public education. You know this to be true. It doesn't end when the school day's over. No. You're grading oh papers. Yeah. You've got the parent yeah, teacher conferences. Yeah. It's, it's just. Oh, and by the way, you have your own two kids. Yeah. Right. Right. On the side. That was great. Yeah. Kudos to All right, cool. Yeah, Way to go, right. Craig. All right, coming up next, the doctor is in with the top wellness trends to have on your radar in 2024. But first, this is today on NBC. Welcome back 844 with your health and with a lot of us committed to living healthier lifestyles in 2024. We're looking at wellness trends to track. That's where Dr. Taz Bhatia is coming in. She's an integrative medicine physician, best-selling author of the book, The Hormone Shift. Dr. Taz, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. I love talking about other ways to promote wellness. And one of them you say is holistic, which is kind of body, mind, spirit, that way to wellness. But how do you get on that path if that's something that you'd like to try? I love the fact that people are really understanding how so many different things play into health and wellness. Mm -hmm. It's not just a lab number, it's not just a test, medicine, but yeah. really it's how you live, the type of job you have, the community, the relationships, all of it, your mind, body, spirit together. And I think one of the things that we really want to do is make sure everybody has awareness that all of this plays into their health. It plays into those lab numbers. So if you have a job that you can't change in a location where you live that you can cannot change, what can you do to improve your holistic health? So you work on the other aspects of your health. You work on your mindset, you work on your relationships, you work on building community, you work on food and movement and stress management and all these other pieces until you're able to really have the energy to make those other changes. Let's talk about something I see a lot of people yeah. wearing. Those are those blood sugar blood tracking sugar. devices. A lot of people are wearing those. Some of them are Dexcom, some of them are others. Why is that important? Blood sugar really is the root of so many diseases today, inflammation.
inflammation, brain fog, how we feel, our energy, belly fat, weight, all these things that people are talking about in the new year. By tracking your blood sugar, you can connect it to activities in your daily life, going back to that holistic thought, that might be impacting how high your blood sugar spikes, and then you can change them. So it's giving you real-time data in the moment to allow you to make changes in your life. I think sometimes we have no idea. We eat something, we feel terrible for hours later, you're cranky, but if you could put your finger on it, you'll know, like, that's that's my button. Definitely. A lot of people are on Ozempic and all those kinds of weight loss drugs. They're very, very popular. But if you want an alternative to those, what what's available? You know, Ozempic has gained popularity because it really helps to lower blood sugar, back to mm -hmm. why it's so important yeah. to track your blood sugar. But there's so many natural alternatives, everything from food and natural products. For example, berberine is an herb that's been around forever. Wait, what's it called? Berberine. Berberine? It's an herb, yeah, and it actually helps to lower blood sugar. It works in a way very similar to something like an Ozempic or metformin. We also know You get that at a store? You can get, get that over the counter. Okay. You can order that. You know, there's um, some dosing, and you always want to run everything by your provider, mm -hmm. but probiotics are another one. Also okay. helps to lower blood sugar and manage blood sugar. And NAC and acetylcysteine, a lot of words there, but that actually helps to lower blood sugar as well. So there's a lot out there in the holistic and natural world to help us achieve what Ozempic is doing in the pharmaceutical world. A lot of people feel crummy in their bodies because their hormones are all whacked out and they don't know how to get everything kind of back in check. This is really your lane. This is my lane, yeah. and we've been talking about this trend for a while, and we are seeing men, women, everyone really want to understand what's happening with their hormone health and connect the dots with what their hormones are doing and how they feel, mm -hmm. how they think, what their weight's doing, and so much more. So I think understanding your hormones, tracking your hormones, that is absolutely a 2024 wellness trend. Okay, is there anything you can do specifically or do you just go to your Definitely. doctor and track? Well, I mean, there's so much you can yeah. do. You should track them. You should know what your numbers for sure but I think again getting in more healthy fats prioritizing sleep and making sure you're getting in deep consistent sleep that makes a difference for hormones and we can't beat this one to death but stress management I really know. I impacts know hormones dramatically is often a starting point let's talk about testing a lot of people don't know what any of their numbers are to even know what they need to be working on but it's important to know your data you know as I think people become more and more educated about their health and wellness they want this holistic approach they yeah. want to track blood sugar they also want to know their numbers mm -hmm. and sometimes they're not able to do that in the exam room so we're seeing this sort of rise in every type of at-home health testing that's available whether it's hormones or your microbiome checking your stool or looking at mm -hmm. nutrients or so much more and and I do think it's a good thing. I think the more educated you can be about yourself, whether it's how you live or whether it's your numbers, I think the more powerful you are in taking ownership of your health overall. And lastly, just uh, the umbrella of longevity. I think a lot of people want to live long and live healthy. What's new in that? realm. I think just again understanding how staying active, yep. staying on an anti-inflammatory diet, building muscle really helps both muscle and bone health and also building community. All of that is really the secret to longevity. Not just living longer, but living in our most optimal, most sure. powerful self. Sure. All right, Dr. Taz, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Speaking of trends in the new year coming up next, we're going to check out the hottest food and drinks we'll be enjoying in 2024. But first, this is today on NBC.
We're back 851 with today's food and New Year brings hey, new trends when it comes to what we eat and what we drink. Yeah, let's talk about drinking now. We're, uh, for, <laughs> for example, the Aperol Spritz might have some competition oh. in the new year. Here with a look at what's going to be in your glass and on your plate. This year, Saturday to Anchor, of course, Joe Fryer is here. Hey, Joe? Yeah, I know you're all still what stuck from the holiday and you're thinking, oh, good, let's talk about food again. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's yeah. why I'm here. So good morning. So 2023, we saw some things you might not have predicted, like butter boards and girl dinner, reinvented martinis and mocktails also grew in popularity. Well, this year, expect to see some surprising twists on old favorites. This story, like any good meal, begins with a drink. Most people have heard of the Aperol Spritz. Yes. What do you got here? Uh, for here, we have the Hugo Spritz. That's what's on the menu at more and more restaurants like Republic Latin Fusion in Brooklyn. Owner Christian Almonte says you just need three ingredients, elderflower liqueur, sparkling wine like Prosecco, and club soda. All right, cheers. cheers. For me, it's a less bitter alternative to the Aperol Spritz. Oh, that's good. That's like super refreshing. Yelp says searches for the Hugo Spritz were up more than 1,100% last year, proof that elderflower is a huge trend. We like to call it the bartender's ketchup in our scene, because you put on a little bit of anything and it just goes perfect, like it, go, it just works. You won't find any ketchup at New York's Nakamura, where ramen reigns. A far cry from the instant cup stockpiled in college dorm rooms. Chef Shigetashi Nakamura is known as one of Japan's ramen gods. Noodle is a game changer, I think. First, we sample a classic style, Torigara, with a thinner noodle that I tried to eat with chopsticks. All right, here we go. Oh. Uh, nope. <laughs> it's okay. okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's try that again. So like this? Perfect. Perfect. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect, like the ramen, which I'm told you are allowed to slurp. That's delicious. <laughs> These days, the chef says thicker noodles and thicker sauces are becoming more popular, with many craving cold ramen. So take some uh, like a noodle like this. OK. And dip. Dip. Dip and eat. Yelp searches for cold ramen jumped 30% last year. So the sauce is sort of the star here, right? Yes. It's got a lot of the flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More diners are also taking a dip into meat alternatives. Chef Guy Vaknin owns several plant-based New York restaurants, including a Nixie, which serves Mediterranean food. Most of our customers are not vegetarian or vegan for that matter. While beef and chicken alternatives are quite common, Vaknin's also focusing on plant-based seafood, a quickly evolving trend. Nice and delicate, uh, the way salmon or cured Very salmon good. should be. Um, it tastes like salmon, I would never know. Yeah. He recently added this salmon filet to the menu, revolutionary, he says. Because you can cook it, it flakes like a salmon, uh, it looks like a salmon, it tastes like a salmon. Um, that's a touch in what the future is going to bring to us. For our final course, let's head back to Brooklyn for an after-dinner drink, the Carajillo. Just two ingredients, a sweet Spanish liqueur and coffee, in this case espresso. Oh, that is good. It is, it's almost like a cup of coffee with cream in it, right? A new nightcap to start the year. Mm. All right, so it's a good nightcap, but also, hey, why not try it this morning? This is the Carajillo, which is made by our friends at Republic Latin Fusion. And it, it's just two ingredients. If you want to try it out, it's basically espresso or any sort of coffee you want to yeah. put in it. Mm. And then it's like a sweet Spanish liqueur. They use something called Liqueur 43. Mm. What do you guys think? This is refreshing. Really good. Oh my it's like gosh, ice coffee. It's like a Bailey's. It's like and a martini. All, yeah. Right. Yeah. And it, well, that's the thing. Like For people who maybe want an espresso martini at the end of the night, mm. this is an alternative. It also tastes like it has cream in it, which it is kind of right. crazy because it doesn't have any oh, cream yeah. in it. It, it is simply two creamy. ingredients. You shake them together. Mm. And yeah, it's like it would be too yum. sweet if it wasn't for the espresso. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's exactly. really good. So it's kind good. Of well done, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Cheers. 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 2024, Cheers. everyone. All right, guys. <laughs> Drinking Coming resolution. Coming up on the fourth hour. New products to help <laughs> I mean, detox. New resolution, not new products. <laughs> <laughs> Try January. Is it over? Yeah. Try February. Uh, first, though. Uh, Maybe it's moist. Hello, on the February. third hour. How to get those all important steps in every day without having to even leave your house. <laughs> That's coming up after your local news. We'll leave after this.
This morning on the third hour of today, heading home. Millions of us making that return trip after one of the busiest holiday travel weeks ever. How it went and what we can expect in the new year ahead. Plus, oh boy. The original version of Mickey Mouse now in the public domain. And Mickey's not alone. What it means for the future of some iconic characters. Then later, the new year by the numbers. How many folks are setting resolutions this year? And how many of us will actually keep them? And in Start Today, we're helping you reach those fitness goals. Our expert, Stephanie Monsoor, has a winter workout we can all do from home. Today, Tuesday, January 2nd, 2024. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the third hour of today. Good to see you guys. Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year. I mean, we, we were on uh, tape yesterday, That's so true. You know, That's we're true. live then for our first show. Craig, Chanel, Dylan off today. Well deserved day off. Uh, Dylan was holding it down. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So all last week. Exactly. So, okay. so, and we thank you for being with us for a Tuesday morning. Hope you had a wonderful holiday season. And my golly, I was so thrilled when I got a text from Mr. Melvin. Yeah. Sending me a picture. New member of the Melvin house. Yes. We, a we, baby. We, we, oh, well, oh, there he is. Baby there, Miles. There's baby Miles. Miles Copper Melvin. Uh, he's an Irish student. We picked him up. Uh, on December 30th, down in oh, Virginia. So cute. Isn't he cute? I thought I told Craig I thought it was and he was named after like Miles Davis or something like no, that. It was no, not the Spider Man. Miles Morales. Yeah. 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 But they also and, so, just saw and, him. And and uh, uh, Sibby picked Coop, uh, Copper. Copper. Yep. So okay. we love the middle name Copper. Nice. But it has been just a magical few days. Uh, now. It's the he's the great unifier because you know okay. you you know you have kids. A lot of times it's this. So are they all in his face? Oh, and... I've had to tell them and my wife. I mean, Lindsay's just as bad as the kids. I'm like, guys. Stop yeah, you, you got to give Miles some space. That's right. Let, just let him walk around. Let him... You know what? You're so. going to end up be. I feel like I'm going to see you with Miles. That's a lot. right. Oh gosh, right. you know it. He's going to. He, that's going to be his alpha. I love that. I love it. I love it. I love How about it. you? So this was an interesting Christmas for us. So we were all together. Yeah. It took heaven and earth for me to get us in those matching pajamas that everybody else oh, does. Oh, you did it? It took heaven and earth. So this might be, I don't know, if I can get my 14-year-old in those things clear. one more time. It was like I got a quick selfie, and then that was it. And then for the first time, the kids flew on their own. They were with their cousins. Oh. They're in Arizona. And so I'm like, text me pictures from the plane. That's like, the best. They're loaded up with snacks and earphones and everything else. And they have had the best time with their cousins out in Arizona. Oh. Uh, Clara went to the Grand Canyon. I've wow. never been to the Grand Canyon. Oh my gosh! But you didn't. That where you proposed to Deborah? I did. I so did. It's a special That's right. place. Well, yeah, because I thought if she said no, only one of us was coming. Oh, <laughs> stop it! <laughs> stop it! <laughs> my God! I'm saying who? <laughs> guys, she said yes. I'm glad she said yes. <laughs> yes. So there you go. So, no so you guys got to be by yourself yes, for the weird. first time. It's like we're back in college again. Oh, that's weird. sitting there looking at each other in silence. <laughs> No, what are we talking about? Okay, so how about, how about you? You, so you had a fool. Yeah. Oh, for the first time in four years, got to do the Rose Parade again with Ms. Cotby. Uh, we had a great Aww, time. As a, a lot of fun. The that. weather was perfect. Yeah, and uh, and uh, Hoda got to be to Aunt Hoda. Uh, Auntie Hoda, she got to meet Skye uh, out there. So oh, oh, look at that. We, and we had a, we, and she was just a terrific little uh, traveler. I mean, Aww. we just had a great time. And, you know, had everybody in. Courtney was there with her husband, Wes, and the baby, and uh, Leela and her boyfriend, Sylvan. It's like and, a new chapter. And Nick. Yeah, you know, it's a, it was great having the kids all together. Uh, and we went wow. to Universal. Uh, and uh, I was there for like seven hours. I'm beat. I haven't done that in I don't know how long. So. So you didn't sound like you had much of a break. Well, you know, but it, listen, family vacation is yes. time away. Yeah. But it's you wouldn't trade it for the world. Yes, Absolutely. It was really nice. oh, yeah. You can excel uh, here at the table. Yes. Well, it's good to, good to be back. Yes, good to see you guys. Um, well, if, if you hopped a flight, perhaps you hit the road over the holidays, uh, you were not alone. 2023 wrapped up one of the busiest travel weeks ever. NBC's Emily Akata live along the New Jersey Turnpike in good company. I was just on that turnpike uh, two days ago myself, <laughs> Emily. <laughs> Hey guys, good morning. Well, you may have noticed more cars on the road this morning as many Americans are settling back into their routines after what has been a blockbuster few weeks of holiday travel. 2022 was the bounce back year for travel, but 2023 brought that number to new heights with more than 115 million Americans hitting the road and the runways for the end of year holidays. This morning, travelers are heading back home and back to work after a massive holiday rush crowded planes, trains and roadways. 
TSA screened more than 2.6 million passengers on seven out of 10 days around Christmas. Lines weaving through airports over the long weekend in places like Orlando, Chicago, and Atlanta. Still, 2023 marked the lowest flight cancellation rate in five years, according to the FAA. Welcomed improvement from last Christmas when winter storms set off a cascade of problems that stranded travelers. Are you relieved you haven't been delayed? I'm relieved, believe me, especially with kids. And while for many flying has been smooth sailing, there have been heightened security concerns over the holiday from the war in the Middle East. And early on New Year's Day, a scary scene in Rochester, New York, a fiery crash killing two and injuring others after two SUVs collided and hit a group of pedestrians near a concert venue. Authorities finding gas canisters in one of the cars, the FBI now part of the investigation. Elsewhere in New York, traffic backed up yesterday around JFK and LaGuardia airports by pro-Palestinian protests on one of the busiest air travel days of the year. And major server issues caused Amtrak disruptions in the Northeast over the weekend. My train has been delayed and uh, I don't know how I'm going to get there. In Florida, Ryan Lewis's family is relieved their travel nightmare is over after a 16-year-old son flying alone for the first time accidentally boarded the wrong flight. He says Frontier Airlines never scanned Logan's ticket and he landed in Puerto Rico instead of Cleveland as a result. I could feel the fear in the text message. Like I could feel how scared he was. My heart pretty much sank at that point. Frontier apologized to the family and got Logan to Cleveland the next day. While New Year's capped off a record stretch of air travel, analysts say 2024 will be even busier. So 2023 was a banner year for travel. What can we expect for 2024? Travel experts say flying to Asia will likely grow in popularity with major airlines building out their schedules for across the Pacific. And they say that in turn will help reduce prices. Another anticipated trend is culinary based globe trotting, where people are building out their itineraries around food. I could get on board with that. And another one, I love this one. Rather than jet setting, there's set jetting. That's where people are drawing inspiration for their vacation destination from their favorite movies and TV shows. Think Emily in Paris, or maybe you want to go to Hawaii after watching The White Lotus. Guys, I think I could get on board with all of these trends. Yeah, Absolutely. Say, Emily in Paris and Emily there in New Jersey. It's very right. nice. It all Thank works. Thank you, Emily. We, by, speaking of Jersey, Thank you, Emily. we were driving back from picking up the, the pup. The rest stops in Jersey are fantastic. Oh, they've really upped the game. I mean, they've got the and over 450 single. diners, too. Oh, there you so. go. Man. All things. Oh, well, now to some big news in the new year from the entertainment world. The original Milk, Mickey Mouse and other iconic characters in pop culture are no longer protected by copyright. Here to break it down for us, NBC News entertainment correspondent Chloe Malas. So, Chloe, this is kind of a, a game changer. Yeah. here. For you are going to be seeing a lot of Mickey Mouse, and it's not what you think. So we're talking about the original Mickey, Minnie Mouse, even Tigger. Anyone is now allowed to use their images. And it's not just cartoons. Books, movies, even music are all up for grabs as of New Year's Day. Remember the original Mickey Mouse, better known as Steamboat Willie? He made his debut in the 1928 animated short film of the same name, directed by Walt Disney and Ub Iwerks. Now this morning, Mickey and thousands of other classic works are entering public domain, following the expiration of a 95-year copyright term. In other words, this Mickey is up for grabs for anyone that wants to use this specific version without permission. I gotta figure out how to make money on this thing. It's simply too good. Across social media, users reacting to the news. One posting, hey, check out this new character I came up with. A spokesperson for Disney saying more modern versions of Mickey will remain unaffected, adding Mickey will continue to play a leading role as a global ambassador for the Walt Disney Company in our storytelling, theme park attractions and merchandise. It's not just Mickey. The original Minnie Mouse and Tigger will also be joining the lot. I'm Tigger. As well as J.M. Barry's Peter Pan. Now, you might be wondering, what's the big deal? Winnie the Pooh's copyright ran out in 2022, and shortly thereafter, a slasher film titled Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey hit theaters, leading to outrage from fans all over the world. Even the film's director said he experienced death threats. 
Now Steamboat Willie's Mickey will be at the center of a horror video game, Infestation 88, with the creators saying they're looking to infuse nostalgia with terror. I thought it was just rodents, but there's something else in here. And it's not just these characters from your childhood, but also works from literary masters like Agatha Christie and Virginia Woolf. Music like Mac the Knife, often performed by Louis Armstrong. When is deep, dear? And the unforgettable Charlie Chaplin with his film The Circus. All now free for use. So Disney holds a separate trademark on Mickey as a corporate mascot. So this means that it's illegal for anyone to use the Steamboat Willie version of Mickey to trick customers into thinking a product or film is endorsed by Disney. So you guys will possibly be seeing more of these characters in situations like Winnie the Pooh, the slasher yeah. movie. There's a sequel coming I don't like this yeah. year. But I want, specific I want iterations of them. Specific yeah. iterations, but I think that it will potentially confuse sure. customers um, you thinking that it's a Warm by and Disney. fuzzy. Yeah. Like, I don't no. think you want to. But now see. they're up for public domain. Yeah. So you could take Steamboat Willie or you could take Minnie and you could put it on your holiday card or do sure. something fun with it and do something sweet that's with fine. it. Do that. But, and you know, that that's one of the do things. That. I mean, when, when the copyright for It's a Wonderful Life expired, that's when it became a classic because oh, it's all okay. of a sudden everybody could run it for free, all these stations. Uh, and you have and Mac the Knife and you exactly. have these songs and you have like Peter Pan, so you might see iterations of plays and movies and some other positive and things. Yeah. As long as it's positive. But when you see the Mickey Mouse horror video game, yeah. Yeah. Disney wants you to know that's, that's not, not ours. That's not <laughs> Mickey. <laughs> Chloe, thank, thank you so you, much. Chloe. You are the real thing. Nobody's going I, I am. No, not yet. <laughs> Your copyright has not expired. Uh, now, uh, we want to give a shout out to our buddy Chanel. Yes. We are so proud of you. Continue to be proud of you. Uh, you're featured in the newest issue of Women's Health on their breakthrough. Look at you. Uh, uh, Chanel, you talked about your, your marathon journey and uh, how it's really changed your mindset. It changed my my mindset. It changed my life. Look at these outfits. I haven't had a chance to see um, the 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 magazine, but on the front. You look like you're 12. I'm going <laughs> to say you are forever young. I felt young. 12. On the front cover is Denise Austin and her daughter. Uh -huh. I remember with my mom doing like workouts to her on the VHS tapes. Oh wow. And so I never. I would pass by. Women's Health Magazine. I would never think I would be inside. Sure. Um, and so, please pick up a copy. I talk more about just how running has almost become therapy. <laughs> you just read the I was. I was just reading it. Well, you have to buy you it. You got a little nod to Jess. So, America. Jess Woods and Yosef, um, thank you guys so much. I couldn't have done it by myself. But. Pick up that new copy of Women's Health on newsstands right there now. When are you going thank to you. announce your second marathon? Oh, I was like, what are we announcing, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> you see how I looked at Just about him? the time you're announcing your new child. Yeah, exactly. It's, I guess okay. it's time to go to commercial. We're back, back with By the Numbers. Uh, so it's gonna, gonna take some time to get used to saying 2024. But this morning, we've got some other numbers to know for the new year. I'm NBC News business and data correspondent, Brian Chung. Happy New Year to Happy you. Happy New Year to you. Welcome back. 2024? 2024, 2024. Um, so obviously this is the time of year where a lot of folks start making resolutions. That's, that's what we like to do in January. Of course, by February, we've broken most of them, but <laughs> yeah. we're going to start by making some resolutions. Among the most popular, what are they? Yeah, well, and by the way, 62% say that they do make resolutions, this coming from Forbes, and for what it's worth, they feel pressured in many cases to make a resolution because that's the thing you do around this time yeah. of year. But here's some more stats about uh, how they set their resolutions, what they are. About half say they'll actually set more than one. They'll set three resolutions okay. just to kind of mix it up. Maybe you end up hitting one of them at least. 48% uh, <laughs> of them 
want to improve physical fitness. This is the most popular one. Obviously, a lot of people trying to sign up for the gym around this time, but this is interesting. Only 20% of them, Craig, say they hold themselves accountable over achieving those resolutions, which means if I don't achieve my resolution, it's your fault. Uh, That's kind of one way to kind of externalize that. You know, you didn't call me. You didn't check in to I see. Believe That's you. the reason why. I got fat and it's your fault. That's the, that is the reason. Uh, this is also, of course, the time of year where folks take back a lot of that stuff that they didn't really want that they got for, for the holidays. What are some of the most popular? 100, wow, 148 billion? Yeah, well, these are returns. So okay. if one of your resolutions was to look at your finances, people are looking at those receipts after the holidays and saying, okay, maybe time to bring some of that stuff back. That's, That's how much we return? 148 billion dollars. But interesting, 50, 15% of gifts will be returned. So that $148 billion is part of about a trillion dollars in overall spend, what? 15% of which is going back. But for right now, it's a good time to get some sales if you do end up stopping at the store for return anyway. 50% off at Target for clothes and toys. We're also seeing Walmart promoting items that are under $5, kind of good stocking stuffers post-holidays. Mm-hmm. But then also at Kohl's, they're advertising up to 70% off. Okay, some deals to be had. Some deals so, to be had. So, Brian, yeah. it seemed like 2023, economy-wise, ended on a pretty good note. What are we looking ahead toward for 2024? Yeah, well, I mean, looking ahead, we're certainly looking at the labor market when it comes to how many people have jobs. The unemployment rate is expected to rise to 4.1%. Not too crazy when you consider we're at 3.7% right now, so that's not necessarily recession territory. Also, GDP growth, which is economists speak for how much is the economy growing. They expect it to grow 1.4% next year. That's good. If it was a recession, that would be a negative number. So 1.4% is certainly good. Uh, The housing market, though, very interesting. We've seen mortgage rates come down as of the last two months, uh-huh. but the home price is expected to rise by about 1% over the course of next year to almost $400,000, and it's going to be most hot in Austin, Texas, wow. where it is indeed also hot. Yeah, hey, that's right. A lot of people like it down <laughs> okay. there. Well, let's talk about some big events that will happen in 2024. Yeah, so uh, the first number that I have for you is 10,500 athletes, okay. of course, at the 2024 Paris Olympics right here on NBC. And uh, obviously a lot of excitement over that in June, but I have a number of other dates that we have to just flag okay. before that. Uh, oh, this is a leap day. Leap so year. February right, 29th, we're, we're going to have that extra day that only comes once every four years. Okay. We're going to spring forward on daylight savings time. That's coming in March. We'll lose it an hour in March. Right. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And then uh, tax day, April 15th. Sorry, I just got to remind, you know, it's important Some to get those tax like documents ready. 17th, 18th. It's weird. It's going to be right there. Smack dab on April 15th. And then, of course, November 5th, the big event uh, being the election 270 electoral votes to win. All right. So are you ready for your first big number of 2024? Oh, the first big number. Of 2024? That's right. Let's see. And I was going to say, are Let's you ready? Get it up you here. Come up- it's 1%. That's what is that? Wow. Any guesses? No. Okay, that is the percent of people that actually follow through <gasps> on their New Year's resolution. Ah. According to Forbes Health. And again, but it's your fault. Right. Yeah. It's your fault <laughs> Wait, if I don't achieve my New Year's resolution. Wow. Yeah. It makes me feel 1%. better. One percent. Who follow through? All year. Have you come up with your... You know, mine was yeah, Things I Adore in 2024. You know, it's funny. My mom texted me a couple nights ago, and she said, wait, I have to come up with my resolution. I thought, you know what? The limb is not far too far from the tree because she's doing the, the same the, thing. You mean the apple doesn't I fall mean, too far No, but here's the, the thing. If you don't set so a resolution... Why, why don't you make like a tree and leave? The limb... <laughs> Oh, it no, is it's the not apple. the limb it's, doesn't fall the, far. It's the apple. It's, it's the a apple. Storm. <laughs> there could be a storm. There the new, could the, be a storm. The New Year's resolution is to get the, uh, the, the mom, analogies right. My mom's. My mom's is deliver more in 2024. I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs> you're there like, you go. You're like Biff. From, my, from mine is to make to a shopping future. list. <laughs> make like a tree and get out of here. Okay. <laughs>
All right, we are back now with Food for Thought and someone who is living life to the fullest. So, guys, he goes by Chef Dr. Tom Lowe, healing the body and feeding the soul. Tell me he stays motivated and is able to balance two passions at the same time. Who doesn't love food? Come on. You know, it's, it's the spice of life. Food is healing for your soul. 100%. Tom Lowe knows a thing or two about food and healing. I've always dreamed about being a doctor. I've always dreamed about being a chef. Why not do both? An anesthesiologist by day, chef by night. Growing up, he loved cooking, even gaining experience in a bakery before heading to Yale University. Ultimately, he felt he had to choose one path. I told my parents, I'm going to defer med school to go to cooking school. And they, they said? I was so excited. They, not so much, but they knew I had this passion for cooking. So after you say, I want to do this, what happens? I moved to New York to go to the French Culinary Institute, and I just discovered this entire world of cuisine. Tom loved cooking, but was unsure of the stability of the restaurant business. So he worked in finance and was in the World Trade Center on September 11th, 2001. I was on the 73rd floor, and it was actually my 23rd birthday. I just heard this huge boom. The North Tower got hit. I was in the South Tower, and I started walking down. And a few moments later, that's when um, we got hit. And literally, uh, the my tower started to sway back and forth. For about two seconds, I thought, if we go down, which I thought we were, I'm not gonna survive this. I gotta get out of here. So that's when I walked down. My mom said I had 23 angels escorting me down the stairwell, and that, that day wasn't, uh, wasn't my time. So I, I'm grateful for that. How did that experience change you. When you have a confrontation with mortality like that and you survive that untouched, um, gives you a different perspective on life. I try to make every moment count. It would seem to me that one of the things, the outgrowths of experiencing something like that is you, you can have more than one dream. 100%. That was probably the start of a moment when I started kind of realizing I need to go back into medicine. Tom went back to school, eventually becoming an anesthesiologist. Along the way, always reminding himself that food was his medicine. So Tom continued working in different kitchens until he finally opened his own restaurant in 2022. Chi in New York City, running the business while attending to patients. What's your goal? as a doctor and a chef. What I would love to do is actually bring the service side that I've, you know, learned from hospitality into medicine. In terms of food, I would say many people in America, what they think of when they, when you say Chinese food is beef and broccoli, wonton soup. General Tso's General chicken. chicken, yes, <laughs> which is great, which I love. Yes. But there's so much more mm -hmm. to Chinese food than just that. And I would love to bring that more to the mainstream. Whether in the kitchen or in the operating room, Chef Dr. Lowe gives each practice his all. Both of those take a lot of effort, concentration. How do you do it? It's a balance, time management. But also, in this life, there's, there's so many things I love to do. Love to practice medicine. I love food. I love cooking. There's no reason not to do them. Seems like you're living the dreams. I'm trying. Now I'm trying. I just adore wow. this guy and his wife. They, they, they're just a terrific family. Uh, while I was there, uh, Chef Dr. Lowe showed me how to make the, the 
signature cucumber salad. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's simplicity unto itself. It really is. We'll put this on our website. This is uh, amazing. And he, he ended up getting into business and starting she with another chef, all because of this very This cucumber dish. salad. This cucumber salad. I could see why. It's got this a nice spice fantastic. to it. I don't like cucumbers. Neither do I. You know, and this is fantastic. So was it easy to make? Pretty easy to make? Pretty simple, yeah. This is worth... It's on today.com? Yeah. Well, we're going to put it there. We'll put it on. Okay, because it's this worth is great. it. It's good. It's a great story. Oscar and Gilman, for more than a decade, our next guest has been giving celebrities a family history lesson. That's right. Dr. Henry Louis Gates Jr. is an award-winning filmmaker, literary scholar, historian, and the host of Finding Your Roots, the PBS series that connects famous faces to their past. It's just so, so good. The series is back for a 10th season, and in tonight's episode, singer Sierra learns a surprising revelation. Here's a preview. What the world? That is your DNA cousin. You are kidding me. Ladies and gentlemen, she is, she is looking at former New York Yankees, Derek Jeter. That's crazy. Sierra and Derek share a long, identical stretch of DNA on their 14th chromosome. Beautiful wow. people. Wow. Yeah, wow. Dr. Gates, it is such an honor to have you here on the show this morning. Thank you. It's my honor. And congratulations. Can you believe it? Ten seasons. No, it's our anniversary. We're going, we're going to party. Let's talk about well, we just saw a little clip there with Sierra. What else can we expect? Well, Alanis Morissette is paired with mm. Sierra. And a deeply moving story. Um, her grandfather had two brothers, and she did not know that they perished in the Holocaust. Oh, they were sent to the Russian wow. front and um, died in Hungary. And in fact, her family had shielded her from the pain of the Holocaust by not telling her that she had Jewish heritage till she was 28 years old. Wow. And we understand that as black people. Sure. Well, if you have children, when do you tell them about the slave experience? Mm -hmm. yeah. And how do you tell them? Right. So it, it, it was very, very moving for me. Mm. Yeah, it's, and it's not just celebrities this season. You actually, as I understand it, you've, you took three viewers and you helped them trace their roots as well. How did you find them? Oh, people would stop me all the time. And they'd say, you know, I love your show, but how about me? You know, how about an average person? They called the average person. Yeah. Phrase I don't like, but that's what we yeah. use, right? Okay. So we opened it up. I was beating up on our producers. Like, Look, you so got to do it. You guys yeah. don't know I'm taking a lot of flack out there. Yeah. And so finally, we opened it up. 9,000 people wow. submitted videos. I can believe it. And then we had, um, you know, we narrowed it down to 10. And then we spent months arguing about the 10, and we settled on um, three people, and we're doing a special episode. I love that. And their stories were just as interesting sure. as, sure. and just as riveting as the stories of celebrities. Mm -hmm. so you, ten, over 10 seasons, there have got to be just some memorable moments. What, what are some that stick out for you? Um, well, Bob Odenkirk. Mm -hmm. um, I love his story because... Let me get ready for this. We found out that his sixth great grandmother, named Maria Kateria Bayan, was the official lover of um, Friedrich Karl, a duke in Germany in the 18th century. Wow. And I showed him a contract that they had. And he said, When my wife dies, you will be my wife. And she was living in the castle and having children. Bad luck, he died. 
Whoops. Be um, before his wife died. <laughs> wow. And so she was never able to, to take her proper place. But because of that relationship, Bob is 11th cousins. You ready? With King Charles III. Of course. Wow. Of course. That's amazing. That's crazy. I yeah. mean, that's amazing. And he's DNA cousins with Nathan Lane. Wow. No. Yeah. Do you have any dream guests? Um, let me see. <laughs> Al Roker. Oh. <laughs> But, We're going to make this happen. Yeah, I know. We're going to make this Al, happen. I, I can tell because he's over here, like, hiding. <laughs> but you can't hide your right here. Well, that's true. You that's know, true. I had begged him. Yeah. He'd say yes, and then he called and say he changed his mind. Um, Dolly Parton. Oh, that'd be a good Look one, at you. Too. Such great company, wow. Dolly Parton. Maybe. I saw Clint Eastwood. Maybe I'm related to Clint Eastwood. Johnny Mathis. Yes. Oh. Martin Scorsese. Oh, I would love him. He's yeah. like God to me. And then and Kareem. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Oh, Kareem. Awesome. So what is it about these folks? Do you see them and you just say, ooh, I want to know about their past? Like, what, what, what is it? Yeah, people who were heroes to me. Mm. Um, people whom I admire. And one whom I admired was LeVar Burton. Oh. And he's in season 10. We love LeVar. And ironically, he was part of the inspiration indirectly because of roots for roots oh sure um, for my roots you know i wanted to do alex haley in a test tube mm. and that's what finding your roots is yeah, it's, and you I, I also would maintain i mean you were before a lot of these dna and all this stuff mm -hmm. i would maintain you have also helped people encourage people to look back mm -hmm. into their family's past as well just the I concept so. no you have but you know as african americans we understand that our past was systematically yes. denied us yes, yes. So we became obsessed with learning about our past. But it's true of everybody. Everybody. When I started, I only did black guests. It was called um, African American Lives. Mm -hmm. Started with Oprah and Quincy and, and Chris Rock, Bishop T.D. Jakes. Yeah. And I got a letter, it's a great story. After two seasons, I got a letter from a Jewish lady. Yeah. And she said, Dear Dr. Gates, I've always admired um, your career, uh, your stands on multiculturalism, I've watched two seasons of African American Lives, but having watched it, I've decided you're a big fat racist because you don't do white people. Oh. How come you don't do Jewish people like me? And I went, oh my God. And wow. so we, uh, as they say on Wall Street, we expanded the brand. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is history because it is wow. fantastic. We all want to know, or a lot of us do, and about nobody our past. knows. I thought white people had coats of arms, you yeah. know, over their mantelpiece, and that we were the only people yeah. who did. Nobody knows. When they sit at that table, they are flabbergasted yeah. when they open their I their can't wait until away. this oh, until wow. this one sits at the table so <laughs> we can. Right. So is this a commitment? Yeah. Uh, we, we will talk about this. <laughs> no, <laughs> seriously. He's seriously. good. He's trying seriously. to talk He's I've got, got to talk to his wife. I've got, uh, well, no, no, my, my siblings. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Gates, thank you so much. Congratulations. Happy Season 10. Thank you. Of Finding Your Roots premieres tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern on PBS and streaming on the PBS website and the app. 10 years.
We're back with another edition of This Is Today. This is where we share some of the most popular stories that people are clicking on on our website, today.com, and here to give us the details, the highlights. Today's digital editorial director, Ariana Davis. Good to, back. Good to have you back. Hi. Happy New Year. Happy How are New you? Year. All right, so this first story giving us a better look at the New Year through numerology. Yes, so numerology is this belief system that new, basically numbers can ascribe meaning to different things in our lives. So the year 2024, when you add up the numbers, it adds up to the number eight. Right. The number eight is a number that we assign with the with the planet Saturn. So long story short, the year 2024 is gonna be a year that's all about perseverance and ambition. It's ruled by the Capricorn trait of Saturn. So essentially, this is the year to make things happen, to go after anything that you might be ambitious yeah. about. Fix the, your face. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like there's something for Chanel in mind. 2023, though, while that was more of a year to kind of dream and manifest and think about yeah. things you want to do, 2024 is the year to actually get things done. That's your oh, motto. Oh, my there mom, deliver more in 24. That's your mom's Ooh, motto. There you go. All right. All right. Good to know. Okay. The one you fix your topic face. everybody loves, baby names. Baby names. What are we looking at 2024? Yes. According to the website Namerology, there are some trends to look out for for this year. So some of the top names that you can look forward to for babies in 2024. Drum roll, please. Alora is Ooh, one of them. Allura. But you'll notice some trends in for girls specifically in that a lot of the baby names this year are a little bit more old fashioned. So names yeah. like Josie, like um, Nelly, Willie, and then also nature inspired names for girls. So things like Juniper, Dove. Mm. I was thinking about Baby Sky. I feel yes. like Sky, you guys were ahead of the trend yes. there. There's a lot of uh, nature inspired names. Poppy, another one, which is uh, our colleague right. Jenna's baby's name. So um, there's a lot of really good names on like the list. Those. And then for guys, for, for baby boys, it's names that are a little bit old Western sounding. So like uh, Jet, Wade, I like Cade, that. names that sound a little bit more what, like old Western. How do you pronounce Western. that last one with the X? Uh, Ziamara. Ziamara. Yeah, Ziamara is, okay. is a pop. Yeah, so I like it. Got, Stetson. There's some good ones this year. Yeah, so, so, so for boys, it's like single syllable old western sound. Currently, it's for the winter season. It's pink. It's pink. Yes, it's called, it is. It is just in time for Valentine's. Thank you. Coffee for you guys. You can red get this hot coffee. or iced. Yep. And it has espresso. It also has some red velvet flavoring as well as some hints of like cream cheese. So oh, I'm a little skeptical. I'm not going to lie. I'm, oh, cur I'm curious what you guys think about this one. It just tastes like sweet iced coffee. What's that pink stuff at the bottom? That's, like that's, like the, I, that's the red, that's the red I'm velvet flavor. The show will be over and I'm still with some story. It's, okay. It's sweet. It's is it yummy? It's really sweet. Listen, I don't people know if love I get it. red velvet, but maybe we got to mix it up a little bit. Okay. You do. If you get to the bottom. It is oh, red it's called velvet. pink velvet. Pink, pink velvet. Yes, pink, pink velvet. velvet. Yes, just in time for Valentine's Day. Was your nickname in high school, Chris? Yes. <laughs> Well done. That was. That was well played. That was well played. That, that I was love that. Well done. Hey, I'm proud of you. Fascinated by the pop tart. The pop tart. What's wrong? With, what's going on? The pop tarts so, bowl mascot. The pop tart bowl. So the first ever edible uh, mascot was at the pop tart bowl. bowl. So uh, do Kansas, we have pop tarts? The, yeah. Kansas State played North Carolina State at the pop tart bowl earlier this in December, and basically the first ever edible mascot came out. He popped out of a toaster. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. He lived his best life while he was here briefly, and then he went back in the toaster so that when Kansas State beat North Carolina State, he came out of the toaster and was devoured. Real time. Like Wait, Charlie the Tuna wanted to go. Al has a sick sense of humor here. He's like, I'm glad he got eaten. Wait, they can actually eat him. They actually, eat, they actually they yes. ate him. Yes, he went into the toaster, he came out that's, again. That's weird. And then they ate him alive. They ate to him alive. To celebrate their win, oh. yes. So, all right. R.I.P. to oh the Pop-Tart oh. mascot. Rest, okay. May he okay. rest in peace. Okay. R.I.P. Pop-Tart. Yes. All right, real, really quickly, uh, uh, cats and dog lovers, what kind of true miracle happened this, yes. this holiday? So the Adams County in Pennsylvania, their SPCA, celebrated for the first time in 47 years. Every single animal had been adopted from their shelter. Oh. They were completely oh. empty. Whoa. All strays had been reunited with families, and all dogs had, and animals had been adopted. So that, that was a really holiday that's a miracle story. that was really sweet. It's a good way to Thank stick you. the that's landing. Those are great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Especially that pop touch story. yeah <laughs> uh, for these stories and more you can head to today.com or you could also sign up for our this is today newsletter and you can do that by scanning the qr code it actually really is a, a pretty i love it I and i love the pop it. card here love it. there you go <laughs>
All right, get ready. We're going to start off the new year with a new start today challenge. Now, as we all know, it can be hard to get motivated and stay motivated during the winter, but you can get your steps in without leaving the house. And here to show us how to do it, nobody better than fitness contributor Ms. Stephanie Mansour. All you have to do is scan the QR code for more on the January challenge. Steph, good to see you. Good Happy, you new too. Year. Happy New Year. Right. Thank yeah. you. Nice to see you. We got all of our, our friendly pages and interns here. Helps Looks us keep our costs good. down. Okay, so... <laughs> So, uh, you and the team over at Start Today uh, have a, a kind of a quick start guide. What, yeah. So, what are the, the tips you've compiled, some of them, to get our year off on the right foot? You know, we're going to ease into the new year. Uh -huh. We are going to start off by committing to five minutes a day of exercise. Okay. We're going to start by eating a little healthier, adding in one vegetable a day, drinking a glass of water before you even get out of bed. Oh. And I'm going to show that you some other messy. ways. It, yeah, well, just sit up. Sit up oh, okay. before you drink the water. This is very yeah, doable, yeah. Though. This is a doable. Very doable. Yeah. And I'm going to be coming at you live over on Facebook when you go into our Start oh. Today Facebook group every day today right after the show oh. 10 a.m. Eastern time every day this week to wow. give you even more tips. So okay. to be productive at, in, in the morning you say you need to start the night before. Yes so you want to plan ahead. I want uh -huh. you to train your brain that when you go to sleep you're seeing your clothes that are laid out for uh -huh. tomorrow. For your, your workout, workout clothes. So when you wake up you drink your glass of water right. you get out of bed you put on your workout clothes and right away we start off with some stretching. So we bring one knee in towards the chest mm -hmm. lower it down then the other in. If you're someone that wakes up with stiff, achy joints or if you have a tight low back, this is a great exercise to do right when you get out of bed before you even go into the restroom to loosen and up your body. This is great for balance too, Al. Yes, exactly. So moving on into the bathroom here. Welcome. Well, hello. And Michelle and George are in my bathroom as well. Yes, they that, are. That weird at all. That weird at all. <laughs> They're going to start by brushing their teeth. So anytime you're in the bathroom, you know, first thing in the morning, I want you to open the feet wide while you're brushing your teeth. Bend one knee, stretch that inner thigh, and then go to the other side and stretch the other one. So this is a really big bang. She's like, my mom morning. made it. <laughs> big bang for your morning routine. Anything. But oh, no, good. No, so no, bending no, the knees, loosening up the hips right, while brushing you're brushing your teeth. Your teeth. We now, can no so longer stand still brushing our teeth, everybody. <laughs> so Steph, you seriously. Brush your teeth. So while you're brushing this. Yes. Okay. Yes, while you're brushing your teeth. Like now while you're shaving or doing your hair, you're going to do some calf raises here. So lifting up onto the tiptoes, lowering down, squeeze those yes. glutes at the top. Yeah, nice, I'm, nice, I'm like right up ours. as high as you can. Okay. Yes. While you're brushing your hair, while you're getting ready in the bathroom. And again, we're trying to implement these little things in your day. Again, this isn't a huge workout, but, but it gets it's something you moving. to get yeah. started. We can yes. do that. We can all commit about, to that. Yes. Right, we okay. brushed our teeth. We brushed our hair. Yep. Now we're, we're going to make, make our eggs. eggs. That's right. So we're whisking <laughs> our eggs. And as we're whisking here, we're going to do some shoulder rolls. So rolling okay. those shoulders up, back, and down. Good. You can even drop one ear to one side here. Feel that stretch right oh, there, yeah. Greg? Yeah. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah. Yes. And then if you're someone that's microwaving or putting something in the blender, we're going to do 10 squats. Okay. So you turn that thing on, and we go down into that squat. Good. Press down through the heels you know to what? stand up. In Dylan's up. defense, when she boils water, she does this. Yes. So it's like just, great. Around, just throughout the day. Exactly. So it's yeah. basically yeah. constant movement. Yeah. Constant yeah. movement. Constant yeah. movement. Constant movement. And then next week, once you do this for a few days, next week you're ready to go with our January challenge. This is great stuff. <laughs> yeah. Thank thing. you guys, by the way. Thank you, Thank guys. you guys. Thank you. Thank you.
Tomorrow on the third hour of today, the best new books to read in the new year. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, products to help detox your winter skin. What's your mom's motto again for 24? Window fire. Oh, no, no. <laughs> D deliver more at 24. Have a great day. We'll see you back. Today we are kicking off our transformation challenge to feel better in 2024. And we're starting things off with gut health. Plus a story of persistence and resilience. How the man behind Clark's Botanicals turned a life changing event into a life he never dreamed possible. And from breakouts to redness, the doctor is in with your winter skin detox. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, it's today with Hoda and Jenna. It all starts right now. Hi, guys. Good morning. Welcome in Tuesday. It is the second day of January. We're so happy to be sitting with you in 2024. A brand new year. A new year. Yes, it is. A 2024. Brand new year. Clean slate. Clean slate. <sighs> Dust off the cobwebs. Here we go. Um, how was your? Tell me about your break. It was good. Yeah. It was good. It was w relaxing. Yeah. I got to be with my family, yeah. which is how, mom and dad. Mom all and good. dad, all good. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> You know what? I love, for some reason, I love these pictures that you guys take. There are so many that are so Poppy's face is the one that always makes me giggle because she's so fun. We had a really good one. Yeah. It was just time outside oh. and, and getting to be in Texas, which yeah. was we love. Yeah, of course. Um, it was good. It was yeah. relaxing. I gave my mom a Dyson. Okay. So I won Christmas. Wait a minute. Look at your mom posing. She was okay. so happy with it, and she was resistant at first. Why was she resistant? Because they've always swept, and that's the way we do things. Yes. But Dust every pan. year, my kids would spill so much, and my dad would be on the ground <laughs> sweeping it, and I'm like, you know what? They need... The Dyson. Dyson to clean up after and your own And then everywhere we saw it, like we would go somewhere and somebody was using Dyson. She's like, I have a Dyson. And it turns out I won Christmas. You are the winner. Mm -hmm. I You're won. the winner. And then we've got to celebrate New Year's and uh, yeah, how was New make Year's? out. We went out. Like, oh my God, which we, we never like a family. Look, Look, we went you. out. Happy. We got New dressed Year's out. I blue dried my hair. <gasps> blow dried my hair. And then if you notice in that photo, <laughs> Mila is just absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely repulsed by her parents. So that's how we started okay, 2024. By the way, that is so perfect. That's like, and if you notice too, you. Poppy kissed me on. Oh, I guess I did make out a lot over New Year. What were you doing? Oh, was There's that mistletoe? mistletoe in Texas that Wait, grows growing? on the trees because it's a weed. And so I cut Wait, it. Wait, pause. Mistletoe is a weed? Mistletoe is a weed, and tech, it's like, I can't remember the real name. It's also kind of, I put it all over the table, and my mom was like, you know, it's kind of poisonous. <laughs> so we, I just was like, don't eat it. Sweet, um, sweet, and so sweet, we, sweet, Whatever, sweet. it was fun. How was yours? It was good. We had a good Christmas. Um, we were all uh, at the beach. Yes. Uh, we got a blow up. Um, you, we that's did that. yours? By the way, we blew that bad boy up. With the, we, at the gas we station? We tied it down. No, it came when you plug it in. It blows up. And it lights up at night, which lit up the whole bedroom. And we, we hooked it onto the... With, with is those, that the front or the back of your house? That's the back. So you have that... Is he still there? He said, might be. Nobody, nobody Let's knows. be clear. My bet is that he'll still be there until, <laughs> it, until at least February. He will be celebrating Valentine's Day with y'all. There's no doubt about it. He's always, he's always back there waving. Unless he blows away. And I got my mom and my girls one of my favorite little necklaces of what I read on their notes every uh, morning, which is, I love you to the moon and back. So you got I, them little I necklaces? I got little necklaces and my mom, too. So Does everybody, say, my, no. I don't have one for me. But oh. it's going to be good. But you know what? I love, it's going to be good. Uh, it's going to be good. <laughs> I, what I love about this time of year is, like, we have permission to reset. And we talked about how sometimes we make changes. Yeah. Like, I'm going to change this. I want to eat less and walk more and blah, blah, blah. But we feel like this should be bigger than yes. that. It should be bigger than a change. Well, and it can also be smaller because sometimes transformation yeah. Yeah. is in the tiny yes, things. Yes, yes, yes. As opposed to like, you know, I mean, I'm trying to think of an example. But for, for when I wrote down my list, I kind of wrote a list mm -hmm. on my phone when I was alone the other mm -hmm. day and mm -hmm. it was like little things like you know try not to react every time something mm -hmm. happens how do you want your house to feel mm -hmm. you know and I kind of wrote about what I wanted to be which is little it's in the little moments that you make the bigger transformation You're right, because you can make one 
tiny change on a Monday. Yes. And then if you do it on the same one on a Tuesday and a Wednesday, and then yeah. it's a week, and then it's a month, and then it's a year. And you've done something that's transformational. Yes. Because you kept at it. But I think the reason they call them practices is because you've got to keep doing, doing them. Discipline. I, yeah. I think, that, I think that's important. But I do feel like, I feel like we're all kind of body, mind, spirit, emotions, we're all four things. Right. And I think sometimes we pay attention to our body. I'm going to work out, work out, work out, and then you still feel crummy, and you're like, that didn't well, really do it. And you're not it. even paying attention to your body. You're right. just doing the things just that you working think you're, you're grinding, yeah, grinding, grinding, it. grinding. So, and then you're like, why don't I feel better? And then you think, well, I got, I've got three other parts of me that need work. Yes. I need my, my, I need my mind, and whatever you put in there matters. You read a lot of good books. Yes. I've, been, I've found some really great books that have been helping me. By the way, we have have Arthur Brooks coming on. I know. He's got an later. He's got another book with out Oprah. with Oprah. He's got an older book out called From Strength oh. to Strength, which I could not put down. It was all about transitions in life. It was beautiful. But anyway, so it's like you get your mind going. Yes. And you get the emotional part of yourself going and your spirit, which is what's driving the whole thing. Your whole bus anyway. Well, and if you don't pay attention to the other three. Yeah. Then the poor spirit is completely depleted. It's exhausted. Okay. However, this is important. Yes, it is. One of the things that I wanted to work yes. on that I think can be transformational, and it's a totally different way about thinking about health, yeah. is through gut health. Yeah. And and just thinking about how you actually feel not when you put things into your body, as opposed to I want to look different. Right. It's how you feel. So we both took a blood test. And the blood test will reveal later what foods we are intolerant to, what foods we're maybe even allergic to. And what, what gut foods, health even means. What it even means. It's kind of a, one of those trendy words that, no, that I really don't know what it means. But I do think what will happen if other, and the, there are different ways you can do this yes. test. It will shock you because there are foods that you and I eat all the time. Almost every that day. That the, uh, the blood test was, was showing was spiking red. So you're like, wait, what? I love that. Yeah. And I eat that all the time. So why is it harming me? But anyway, we'll talk we're about gonna that. Take, yeah, we're going to yeah. take some action. Okay, so there's a new social media trend that people are posting, and it's what's in for 2024 and what's out yeah. for 2023. What we're going to let go of, what we're going to bring more in. So we made our own list because everyone's doing it, so we wanted to get on trend. Copy. Okay, yeah, that's okay, what we do. Okay, the first one that's out. Out. Mindless scrolling. Stop. We're not doing that anymore. Nope. No, we're I'm not. I'm going to need somebody to change my Instagram passwords. All right, so now here's another out. What our kids are saying. We don't like these no, words. No, we're done Here with them. Here they are. Say them. Bruh. Yeah. Preppy. And what, what the? the? <laughs> Wait, what the has to go immediately? Immediately. I see. I'm done with bruh. Bruh. Hey, bruh. Yeah. Don't answer, especially when they call you whatever they call you. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I answered that. Okay. The next one for over is over committed. Yeah. No. Goodbye. Stop saying yes to things you don't want to yeah, do. Yeah. If you're about to say no and you want to say no, just say, say no. no. I mean, okay. we're talking to ourselves. We're saying it loud so we can hear ourselves. Yes. Okay. okay. The last one that was this. coming back, but we're done with it. No. It, what about nature? Oh, the, oh no. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> that one we like. Hit it. We're done with low-rise jeans. We know y'all wanted to bring them back. Nobody, whoever. nobody ever. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, America. Nobody looks good in low-rise jeans. When your pants are falling off, no, things don't work well for you. Nothing. You can't walk well. No. You're carrying your kids you're in your bags. You're pulling, pulling. You're yanking. You're done. sitting. You're wondering. Okay, done. let's go to the ends. Let's go to the ends. We've okay. got top of our list, nature, nature walks. walks. Get out in it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Every day. Yes. Or as much as we can. The other thing is spontaneity. Let's just go on a random road trip. Why don't we go see Dinner. Broadway today? Broadway, Do you right want to meet for a drink? Let, That's more fun than the plans that you have yes. forever and ever. Yes. Okay, we're into more dating. Why not? Why not? We need to date more. We'd like to. I mean, I'm going to date one person. Yeah, your husband. <laughs> you can date a couple. I can, and I will. This is the year of that. Oh. I think it's time to just step into it. Okay. Okay, and also, here's a good one. We're into the truth. It sounds basic, but... When someone's, when you don't want to go somewhere and you say, oh, I can't go because I need a babysitter and blah, blah, just no just thank no. you. Pause, pregnant pause, don't fill it. It's okay. You're allowed to say no yes. to things. Just, just it's say funny it. how the truth and overcommitting are kind of yes. one and the same. Yeah, they are. Because if you're telling the truth, you're not going to overcommit. Okay. okay, we want to hear how y'all are transforming this year. So tell us on the social using the hashtag 
Hoda and Jenna 2024. Let's all, let's all get on the train together. I think it could be a fun 2024 year. Me come, too. come up next. Okay, here it is. Your friend created a new dating profile, but you don't like her photos. Should you tell her? If we're telling the truth, what do we do? Okay, you're we're weighing in on your social dilemmas right after the hey. Tell me hey, that's truth. not your best look. Tell the truth. Yeah. It is time to help out our viewers for the first time in 2024 in a segment we love to call Hoda and Jenna's, Jenna's Social Dilemmas. Dilemmas. Okay, here it is. First up, my friend Cindy told me her New Year's resolution is to work out more. She knows I love the gym and asked me to be her partner. The gym, though, is really my time, and I don't like working out with somebody else. Can I say no? Yeah. <laughs> you know what you could do? You know what you could do? You know what you could do? You could do your normal workout time. Yes. That's for you. And then as a bonus, Ooh. you could do a bonus workout with her. Because you know what? She's not going to work out as much as you because she's just getting started. And Or you could be honest and say, here's the thing. The, g the gym is really where I go to kind of decompress. And I don't love partner workouts. But I want to help you kickstart yeah. for the next two so weeks. Let's, go, let's do it. Yeah, we'll see you on. Yes. Let's Or, you know, let's do it one, twice right. a week. You're and right. then the other days do right. it for yourself. Right. That's because, good. Because you know what? Helping somebody with their health is, is awesome. going to make you feel good. Yes. And maybe you'll like it more than you think you will. Right. <laughs> I like that face. Because I'll say, partner, when you, I work yeah, out with work a partner, out. Yeah. I run on that treadmill way more than when I'm by myself. I know. You do I like, like motivation. You like competition. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you like. But I do think that that's great advice. I'll, let's Start. go a couple weeks, me and you. I want to I want to get you going, Kickstart. and then I hope you don't mind. I'm gonna I'm yeah. gonna fear off. I'm getting off on the exit ramp. And by the way, you you may change. Yeah. Okay. The next one, my friend Dina. Wow, we're using names. Is so excited to jump in the online dating pool. She just showed me her dating app profile, and some of the photos she selected are just not flattering. Oh. How do I tell? Not her? flattering. You know what you say? Wow. I, I, do you like my dating profile? You know what you say? But wait, remember that picture that you took last Christmas? Yes. You were so pretty in that red dress. I bet you that's a good one yes. to add to your profile. And, and also, if Dina showed it to whoever it is, she wants advice. So I think it's Maybe. A Some people just show to go, here's my dating profile. I'm so excited. Oh. You don't think she wants advice? She may not. Well, I like your idea of saying, yeah. remember Halloween? Remember, oh my gosh, we remember that was so fun. That actually or showed you. you can use other people as an example, even though we're saying tell the truth completely. <laughs> we're but not. you can say, they say you're supposed to do one in an active. You remember how they say oh, that kind yeah. of stuff? Do one, do one where you're active. active. Do one with other people. You can sort of use that as the basis. All right, here's our last one. I want to get a promotion at work this year. My work husband and project partner has no motivation to do any more and get ahead. How do I quote, divorce him so I can get noticed. I'm very confused. Why? She's like a work partner who she's always with, and maybe, maybe. He's dragging her down he's dragging a little. Her down. Yeah, you got to. It's gotta, hard to get divorced from somebody you're going to see every single day. But you got, no, but you, you're not going to be, he's not your husband, okay? Well, he's that's true. He's your work true. husband. So, and you do want to move on, and you are ambitious. I'm sorry that he's not. So what do you do? You, what you do is you get on the track at work that you want to be on. Just say, look, I'm really anxious. I mean, they're, they're having some promotions. I, I feel like I'm qualified and I really want to work for it. If he's with you, 
take my hit. Let's go. And if he's not, he goes, look, that's too much. I'm not staying late. I'm not doing that. Just say, yeah. I totally get it. But, but I'm going to do my thing. Yeah. yeah. No, and you don't have to do the same thing as somebody else. Why are you doing the same no, thing? No, you need to, I guess you need to get divorced yeah. from, from the work husband. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. And if you've got a social dilemma, y'all, tell us about it. All you have to do is go to hodatandjenna.com and hit the connect button. Coming up, Jenna and I kick off our 2024 <laughs> transformation. We do a gut check. We're going to get some healthy tips that might help all of us coming up after this. Why did I leave my hat on? I don't know. I'm a little scared. Today we're kicking off a brand new series it's called Transform in 2024. So Jenna and I, we are ready. We're ready to improve our health and our wellness, and we'd love for you to join us on our journey. Okay, this is not a one-day no. challenge. It's not going to happen overnight. Hoda and I want to make real lasting changes to our lifestyles, and today we're starting off with something I'm hoping to prioritize this year, gut health. Take a look. We've talked a lot, Hoda and I, about what transformation means. It's about really thinking about things holistically, your health, your happiness, your well-being. You just keep pushing through your days, your weeks, your months. So we decided let's right the ship and not make a change, but make a transformation. So how do you do it? You do it physically and you do it spiritually and emotionally. So this month, Hoda and I have decided to challenge our bodies and our minds to feel better in 2024. We're kicking things off with something I'm interested in, gut health and learning how specific foods can affect our bodies. I've had three children in the last you know, 10 years. And I think for the, those 10 years, my priority really was their health, their nutrition. Sometimes I would eat just string cheese standing up at the table while they sat down for dinner. And they say your gut health is your overall health. So if you can figure that piece out, maybe all of a sudden, your life snaps into focus. Hoda and I both eat pretty healthy and we feel like there's room to really think about mindful eating, what we're putting into our body. According to gastroenterologist Dr. Roshini Raj, improving your gut health and digestion can improve sleep, your mood, and heart health. If your gut health is thrown off for some reason, that can not only make you feel kind of lousy in terms of your digestion, so having a well-balanced gut actually helps you with your metabolism and with weight gain as well. And we know that if you're feeding your gut the right things, those are also healthy foods for your entire body. I'm afraid that even things that are healthy yeah. may be sitting wrong with me. Um, so I'm hoping to get my gut health in check in 2024. Absolutely. So we enlisted some help from Kate Kresge from Rupa Health, a centralized platform for healthcare practitioners to order various lab work. She facilitated blood tests that would tell us more about our possible food allergies and sensitivities. Those are two different parts of your immune system that can react to food and just make you feel poorly, even if you're making all the right food totally. choices. Yeah. Symptoms of food allergy can include immune reactions such as hives, itchy throat, and in severe cases, an anaphylactic reaction, while food sensitivities can cause pain, nausea, or stomach discomfort. Yes. That was it? Okay, great, thank you. 
Here's my thing with food. I don't know what it is, but every now and then I'll be going along my merry way and I'm like, I feel terrible, I feel sluggish. If part of the food reaction you're experiencing is immune-based, so your body just isn't tolerating a food yeah. very well, or you're allergic to it or sensitive to it, we'll pick it up with this blood test. How are you with needles? Fine, fine enough. And just like that, you're on your way to finding out the answer. The goal of food sensitivity testing is not to tell you, hey, you can never eat this food right. again. It's to say, what foods is your immune system too reactive to? Let's calm it down, let's try it again, and let's see if we can have your body make peace with that food again. So Hoda and I are ready to put in the time, energy, and effort to transform in 2024. Okay, we're ready. With us now is Will Cole, a functional medicine expert and author of Gut Feelings, healing the shame-fueled relationship between what you eat and how you feel. This is so important. I guess I haven't really given gut health a no. lot of thought, but this was something that was top of your list, Jenna. It's top of my list, yeah. but I don't even really know what it means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of one of those words that people throw around. What yeah. exactly is gut health? Yeah, it's nebulous, right? Because what what the heck are we talking about? Yeah. It's it's more than digestive health. It is digestive health. Yeah. But as you said in the clip, it, gut health, what happens in the gut doesn't just stay in the gut. Yeah. It's home to 75% of our immune system. Inflammation is a product of the immune system. So a lot of inflammation issues have gut-centric components. And also 95% of serotonin, our happy neurotransmitter, is made in the gut. Our gut's known as the second brain. So hormone, mood, energy, inflammation, and digestion all has to do with gut health. Well, it's funny because we eat pretty good diets, but we had no clue of what was harming our gut, what was helping our gut, what we were sensitive to. And so we got um, our results. And I think we should start with Jenna's. Okay. Uh, you didn't administer these tests, yeah, but, but you did you review analyzed them. them. Yes, so let's, we did. Talk, let's talk about Jenna's results. Okay, so Jenna had some had some allergies. She had a moderate allergy to soy. Yes. And that's an IgE response or a more immediate immune system response. And then she had a, several IgG responses. Yeah. So yeah. you got apples, green peppers, lobster, and scallops. I know. And things I love to and eat. And soybean yeah. and tuna and turkey. Yeah, and that's what I hear oftentimes turkey, yeah. from people. That was Could moderate. Could turkey be because I eat all the time a turkey? Yes. Almost every day? It's not... When I see a lot of these foods, it typically that's what someone says. I eat this a lot. Yeah. It's not so much that these foods, there's nothing inherently wrong with these foods. These are all healthy whole foods. But it's the immune system's overreaction to these foods. you're reacting to the foods. So it's, and remember, all labs are snapshots in time. Right. So you want to always pair labs like this with an elimination diet to see what your body loves. So and get what your body rid of some loves. of those things for a couple of weeks. Try yes. to work on the overall gut health and then see. So exactly. you'll lose what, lobster and all those yeah, tuna, scallops, tuna. scallops, all um, those things. Okay, seafood. let's. Can we see Hoda's list? Sure. And let's this talk is about heartbreaking. This. Is this heart Mine is heartbreaking. I'm. I, I eat eggs. Eggs and apples are but kind of. You're moderate in a lot of things. What's candida? What is that? Well, candida is not a food. I don't think you're okay. like serving up a bowl of candida. I don't even know what is it? Is <laughs> it's, it spice? A, it's a yeast fungus, yeast. actually. So mm -hmm. normally. But I'm glad you're allergic. <laughs> and that's what just. Yeah. So the reality is when you have a candida immune response, it's typically a sign of some yeast and fungal overgrowth in the gut. I would do further tests to confirm that. Fungal. Mm. <laughs> okay. So what should we all be doing yeah. to improve our gut health? I mean, we can talk about us specifically, but yeah. really all of us are in the same thing. Right. You have some advice. It's, yeah, it's a massive issue because, again, the gut is so influential. Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine, said all health problems begin in the gut. Yeah. Yeah. And now research is catching up with antiquity. Mm -hmm. that the majority of health problems we face as a society begin in the gut, okay. at least in part. So give us some practical things we can all do. Foods we can eat, things we can change. So number one, I would focus on soups and stews because digestion requires a lot of energy, right? So breaking that food down, almost like pre-digesting it in a super stew, a hearty super stew, you're getting your calories that way allows the gut to sort of proverbial siesta for your gut to yeah. repair. Could you, you just chew food? A whole bunch of times. You could, but having <laughs> that's what someone told me. They said chew it till it's almost the liquid. I think they said that and because swallow. you and I eat so fast. Maybe that's part of you our problem. You also love bone broth. You'd like to start your day that way. Yeah. So ha focusing on bone broth or plant-based broths as well, like galangal ginger, seaweed broth. But again, having that as the base. But these carb-rich vegetables, 
protein, makes it easier to digest. Beans, oats. Beans, oats. And by the way, I think a lot of us who were raised in the you know 80s and 90s think carbs equal bad, and mm -hmm. you're saying that is not yeah. true. No, not all carbs are equal, right? They're not all metabolized in the same way. So don't fear fruits, don't fear starchy mm -hmm. vegetables like sweet potatoes, yeah. and even these carbs Beans, when they're oats, what about lentils. What about a probiotic? Because a lot of people say if you get the right probiotic, it'll yeah. right your gut. Exactly. I would start with probiotic rich foods like kombucha, kefir yogurts, sauerkraut, kimchi. But yeah, probiotics, I recommend spore-based probiotics typically spore -based? to patients. They're from soil, yeah. right? Humans throughout history would have been outside more in nature. Mm, yeah. And that's sort of what the researchers call an ancestral mismatch, an evolutionary mismatch. We need to, we can take it in supplement should, form. Should you take a probiotic on a completely empty stomach? Yes, typically that's what's that's recommended. That's the worst thing Because I think you forget. You're like, yeah, so do it on an empty and then start so your day. So spore-based probiotics okay. and or get it from natural yeah. food. Yeah, from okay. foods. Cool. Okay, oh my gosh, thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so Will. much. We need more time. Thanks, Will. All right, <laughs> next week, it's my Transform in 2024 challenge. I've got a mindful journey in cold therapy. Okay. We're working on breath work. Yes, and we. And we, we also want to see how your transformation is going. So tag along with us. Come on our wellness journey. We'll give you some things that you can do along with us. Hoda and Jenna, 2024. Okay, coming up next, how the man behind Clark's Botanicals overcame the odds to create the life of his dreams. Right after this. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Will. inspired if the answer is yes and Jenna you got the story for us oh my gosh I sure do you're about to meet Francesco Clark who describes himself as a glass half full kind of guy and it, it's that mindset that has helped him overcome some enormous challenges and create a beautiful beautiful mm -hmm. life take a look Francesco Clark is living a life he could have never imagined I'm lucky mm. I really just feel like I'm living a dream. I love that you just said, I'm lucky, and yet you've lived through some pretty hard things. I think life is best acknowledged through the perspective that you look, whatever lens you look through. Yeah. 21 years ago, when Francesco dove into a pool, his life changed forever. Talk to me a little bit about that day. I was 24 years old. I was working in fashion, I was working at Harper's Bazaar, just got promoted, and I felt like I was unstoppable. I dove in thinking it was a deep end. I was paralyzed in the blink of an eye. I became a shadow of myself for three years after I had to redefine my life in a wheelchair. and. Not being able to get up and get a glass of water at midnight when you're thirsty, or, or go out with your friends when you want to. I felt like an infant. I couldn't look in a mirror. I couldn't be in a room. Because what would you see when you looked in a mirror? All I would notice was a wheelchair, and I would burst into tears. I realized that a secondary effect of my injury was that my skin stopped sweating, so I developed rosacea, eczema, and a hypersensitivity to ingredients that every other skincare line uses that made my skin look older. So when I looked in the mirror, it wasn't me. And I felt betrayed by my reflection. 
Francesco's father was a medical doctor also trained in homeopathy and helped his son come up with a unique formula to help his skin. Clark's Botanicals never was a business plan. It was something that I started from a hospital bed to empower myself. It was a psychological and emotional recovery. So how did Clark's help heal you? It helped me connect. It helped me feel like a human being again. Friends and family started to notice the improvement in Francesco's skin and they wanted in. In 2008, Francesco's personal project bloomed into a business. And today he is CEO of an award-winning global brand. I can't help but think about how much hope and resilience there is in your story and probably what hard work it took to find that hope. You have to wake up every morning and work at it. Email Raymond. It doesn't just happen. I don't live in a dream that every day is a good day, but you deal with them and you work through them. Francesco's life has become even more full. He found love with partner Alberto Mahelcic Banzana and with the help of a surrogate, welcomed twins this past June. Now we have two giggly, chubby babies that really center me <laughs> and make me feel more determined and make me feel calm. Our little miracles. <laughs> Look at his smile. Francesco and his family have written their own script, and it's a beautiful one. Does this feel like when you have the, these babes in your arms that your family's complete? Yes. Yes. Yeah. This is our unit, and this is our purpose. My sense of self is no longer about me, and my existence now encompasses so much more. For me, my spinal cord injury was something that happened, but my life could have ended, mm -hmm. and I could have become a memory of somebody who could have been, instead of somebody who now is. I love him so much. <laughs> Francesco is also an ambassador for the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation, where he helps others with spinal cord injuries. And you guys, Clark's Botanicals, mm. I mean, how amazing that he created something so incredible out of such hardship. It is an incredible brand, and you can find it in Blue Mercury stores and online. And the fact that he's defying all the odds, I mean, oh, moving yeah. his hands. No, he wasn't ever supposed to be able to move his arms, oh, his wow. hands, but wow. he's worked so hard. It's the dedication and also optimism. My gosh, his attitude is the first, everything. That, <laughs> in that question where he yeah. said, I feel lucky, yeah. those were the first words he said to me. I feel lucky. Wow. Anyway, he's incredible. Okay. Coming up next, the doctor is in with a detox for your winter skin after this. Isn't he amazing? Oh, my God. He's amazing. Oh, my God. Is that your friend from
if all that eating, drinking, and lack of sleep over the last few weeks is catching up with you, it is time for a holiday skin detox. Here to help us is Dr. Angela Lamb, Associate Professor of Dermatology at Mount Sinai right here in New York. So good to see you. All nice right, we all need you. this today. Yes. Let's start with under eye issues, bags, and things. What do you have for yes. that? Yes, so we have this uh, Charlotte Tilbury Cryo Recovery oh, Eye Serum. Oh, do you put yes. that in the refrigerator? Yes. So you keep this in the refrigerator. It has this nice little ball here to get the cooling action. It also has caffeine, green tea, pomegranate Ooh. to get the cooling, depuffing. When do you everything. use it? Yeah. So you can use this in the morning uh -huh. for sure because you want to get that quick action. Mm -hmm. Then also for under eyes, we have our CeraVe Skin Renewing Eye Cream. I like that. So Everybody loves this, CeraVe. Yeah, yeah. This also has caffeine in it, so it good. constricts mm -hmm. the blood vessels. Um, you also get the ceramides, which CeraVe is really known for. Mm -hmm. um, so you can use this underneath makeup. It oh, actually good. won't pill. So this is a lovely one, a nice compliment. You can use that at night and in the morning. Okay, okay. so you know, during the holidays, we're wearing a lot of makeup. Tons. Some of yes, us are going to parties. Yes. What can we do if we've kind of started to break out or we have a lot yeah. of... Yes, and sometimes we go to sleep without taking off the makeup. Mm -hmm. So we have this Mad Hippie Vitamin C Serum. Oh, I what I serums. love is this has the vitamin C, the ferulic acid, as well as the hyaluronic acid. So you get that brightening, that tightening. So again, when that should you put skin. that on? It's so after. that one you're going to use um, at night. Oh, feel that, you also feel can that. use that in the oh, morning as that. well. I love vitamin C in the morning. And do you use serum before your moisturizer or yes. afterwards? You're going to use the serum before the moisturizer. So okay. you're going to layer that right on top of this the skin. And what so, are these little guys? So these are some cleansers. They, they sent along because again oh. you want to wash your face in the morning before okay. exactly okay then uh, next for another serum again that's going to give you that plumping action mm -hmm. we have this solar wave um, this has actually a prebiotic in it so it's going to renew the skin mm. it has some avocado in it and it really also has that hyaluronic acid what I love about hyaluronic acid is it gives you that moisture so again when your skin is feeling and dull, I know it's so cold out. in yes. a lot of our country love so that. it is dull yes. all right let's get rid of the acne people yes. love these patches Yes, mm -hmm. so we love these patches. This is actually the number one dermatologist recommended brand. Um, so these are going to go right on a breakout. Right on so again, you, you wear haven't it been night. washing your face, you wear it at night. I see people wear these during the day I've too. Seen a lot. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> They're so thin you can put them right Kinda on. Kind of can't see. Right. Yeah. Okay, no. <laughs> finally, our skin is dry. Let's yes. yes. You're going to have that dry, Ooh. irritated skin. Ooh. So is this imagine, body? yes. So, so this, this is, is good body. for kids. We too. have the First Aid Beauty. Mm -hmm. um, we have the, their Ultra Repair Cream. This has the colloidal oatmeal in it and I love that because I mean you guys are just putting that on so evenly it feels so um, it's gonna help with all of the symptoms of that stressful experience with family your skin's irritated dried out you have the eczema Wait, itchy skin Vaseline this is tried and, and true the, yes Look tried you, and true this is the OG so Vaseline is gonna give you that quick fix okay you can mix it with other things it's good for the whole family um, you can put it on your hands and again it's going to prevent moisture from evaporating off the skin surface um, nobody's allergic to it and so we've got every Everything tackled. Oh All my gosh. of the you did post holiday. It. Dr. Angela, um, you're issues. the best. Yes. Thank you. Coming up next, how a busy mom of three created the career of her dream. Yeah, we catch up with Style Star and author Eva Chen right after this. with the mom of three who is living her best life. Eva Chen is a style influencer who's the director of fashion partnerships at Instagram. Eva also happens to be a best-selling author and she is out with her ninth, ninth. Yeah, ninth children's book. 
It's called We Are Golden, 27 Groundbreakers Who Changed the World. It's so good to have you here. You know, when I'm looking at you, Jen and I, of course, we follow you on Instagram and everywhere else, but you've got this glamorous life and then you've got your three kids. It's like you're living two lives at the same time. Yeah, I think it's something that many of us, like moms, have that duality, right? We're yeah. struggling to keep it all together. You can see that picture of little River grabbing me <laughs> as I'm trying to head out the door. I love my children, but I also love my work. I love, like, the children's books. I get to write. So you are trying to juggle it all, and it's, it's hard. It's hard for us. <laughs> I love your children's books yeah. so much. Thank and I know you. when we got to be together earlier this month, my yeah. sister said that w some of yours are her daughter's favorites, oh, too. They feel personal in some ways. Yes. I grew up reading children's books. It was what I always wanted to do when I grew up. Um, and, you know, I wanted to write books that really represented um, things that I didn't have growing yeah. up. So when I wrote I Am Golden, which came out two years ago, it was really about like Asian American joy. Mm -hmm. I never saw books with covers that looked like me. Mm -hmm. And this new book, is about Asian history that really isn't taught at schools. Like yeah. only about 20 states teach Asian American history. Mm. So I wanted to write a book that from that very young age, two, three, four, they're exposed to new people and new historical icons. I love that. You know, well, people look at you and they think, wow, I wonder if she just was born on third base, like ended up doing so well in her professional career. But yours was a long slog to get there. Slog. And, I, and, I, some I, and some changes. Like it changes. wasn't linear. Yeah. It was absolutely not linear. I started out, I'm a first generation American. My parents worked so hard for my brother and myself to have the opportunities we had. But really, like, I thought I was going to be a doctor. I grew up really only thinking there were three careers, doctor, banker, lawyer. Mm -hmm. And this path that I took where I worked in fashion magazines, I did a lot of things and was really bad at them. I worked in a law firm. I've worked, like, in PR. I've done everything. Um, and I feel so fortunate to do a lot of things that I love right now and dip a little bit in each. What did your parents think when you were on this windy road? Because most parents, especially as an immigrant, might my parents are immigrants too. They're like, this is going to be the path. Well, um, I think they had faith. I hope they had faith. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, I think a lot of it was based around understanding. You know, I think when you come to a new country, you really want stability yeah. for your kids, yeah. right? Like, and that's the wish that every parent has for their kids, mm -hmm. for their kids not to struggle, not to have a hard time. But um, I hope that they kind <laughs> I, I don't know that they truly understand, but many people don't truly really understand <laughs> the work that I do, but um, I'm really grateful to everything, and I couldn't have done it without them. Okay, can we go through some of the incredible people mm. that you highlight, and we are golden. Oh. Yes. Talk to us about some of them. Well, right on the cover, you see Chloe Kim, who's yeah. an amazing Korean-American snowboarder. I'm sure she's been on the show mm. yes, she times. Yes, she has. Many times. Like one of the youngest Olympic gold medalists. We have uh, Tetsuya Fuji Fujita, who is a scientist who uh, invented the scale for tornadoes. Even now, they call there's a Fujita scale. Uh -huh. uh, there's Chloe Kim right uh -huh. there. The uh -huh. artist Sophie Diao was oh, really my captured God. the Beautiful. energy. You see Naomi Osaka, Michelle oh, yeah. Kwan, who uh -huh. I'm like obsessed with, grew yes. up being obsessed with. Sandra O, oh, icon, yes. so iconic. I'm proud to be Asian, she proclaimed uh -huh. during the Stop Asian Hate Crisis. The author Amy Tan, who really was like a roadmap for me in uh -huh. many ways. Like her, The Joy Luck yes. Club was a book that I One read growing up. One of my favorite mm. books. The best. Have you ever gotten to meet her? No, oh. Amy, if you're watching this, well, I've been DMing you. I slid into your DMs. Please respond. Well, guess what? We have a special she, she did message. respond. <gasps> we have a special what? message for you right now. Oh my God. Hey, Ava, oh this is God. Amy Tan. Big congratulations on your latest awesome book, <laughs> We Are Golden. Uh, and I'm so honored to be part of this book. In a way, it's wonderfully <laughs> ironic because when I was growing up, this was a book that I wanted to oh. read. This is a oh. long time coming for the child in me oh. who oh. wanted a book like this. <laughs> it's an important <laughs> book. It's going to be important to a lot of kids. And I congratulate you for writing it. And I thank you for writing it. Oh. Uh, okay. Best of luck. <laughs> I'm, like about you. I'm fully crying. Oh. How amazing what is that? What an amazing New Year's <laughs> gift. I mean, wow. Well, it's the book she wished she had. That's a, it's incredible. But truly, like that is the book, and wow. like, for her Ugh. to be in it, and for that moment, has, it's full, fully like full circle. Wow! Moment. Thank you. Happy Thank 2024. You. Thank you. Just the second day of the year. year. Well, I know. I know. Okay, and done. you guys, we are golden. It is out today. You can go to today.com/books or go wherever you purchase your books <laughs> to get this for the kids in your life. We'll be back right after this. <laughs>
Coming up tomorrow, a mindfulness makeover with author Liz Moody. Plus, Katie Lee Beagle transforms your favorite food. And Justin Silvestri's got the scoop. Okay, it's January the 2nd. Yes. And it's Tuesday. Let's Bye. go. Yo, today all day, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada has the cure to your midday munchies. She's going to whip up four easy snacks so you'll always be prepared when hunger strikes. First up, Sama making one of Hoda's favorite sweet treats, dates stuffed with almond butter that can be served hot or cold. Then she bakes up a simple super maple almond granola. And finally, she's making popcorn that's spiced with garam masala. Say bye-bye to butter with a spicy snack. I'll just say this, okay? If you have a first date with one of these dates, you will be having more. <laughs> I can't with myself. <laughs> I cannot go a single day without snacking. Whether I'm at home or on the go, it is simply hashtag always snack time. Honestly, a world without snacking is simply not one I want to live in. So I cannot wait to show you three of my favorite weekly snack staples, my delicious stuffed dates, warm and frozen, my nutty maple granola, and my delicious masala popcorn. I love dates, and no, I'm not talking about the romantic kind, I'm talking about the medjool kind. They are my favorite sweet snack to eat throughout the day, and I'm gonna show you how to make them two ways, warmed and stuffed, and frozen and dipped in chocolate. Most dates come with pits, so I've actually already pitted these. I've got about 10 here, so I'm just gonna now take them on a little journey to the microwave for about 10 to 15 seconds, just to get them really nice and warm and juicy. first date or a second date when you have 10 dates ready to be stuffed with almond butter. <laughs> Warming the dates brings out their already naturally golden and caramel flavor and then when you stuff them with almond butter the heat actually allows the almond butter to melt so it gets really nice and gooey and delicious. I really already want to eat one right now. <laughs> okay we're gonna start stuffing them. So I've got a creamy almond butter here. You can also use a crunchy almond butter. You can use a peanut butter, a cashew butter. If there are any nut butters that you're harboring in your pantry, this would be a great time to use them. I'm pretty generous here. I would say I use about a teaspoon to two teaspoons just because I like a lot of almond butter, but you can totally choose however amount works best for your life. Because we pitted the dates, it actually serves as a really nice pocket for the almond butter to just sit in, a little home, you know? It's like this date was meant for almond butter. You know what I mean? Right? Good form, I think. And I'm just gonna continue with the rest of my dates. So actually, Hoda saw this recipe on my Instagram and has now deemed it to be her favorite snack. You take a date, and remember I told you the whole thing? Yes. You nuke it, you put in some dark chocolate and, and some I almond butter. Yeah. You know what I like? <laughs> I like the melted chocolate in the peanut buttery nut butter thing with the salt. So Hoda, if you're watching this, it's for you. You can kind of see how when I put the almond butter inside this little pocket, it starts to melt a little bit and looks so gooey. Oh. It's like a little river of almond butter that I want to swim in. It's a lucky date. <laughs> ah, I crack only myself up. So for this recipe and a lot of the other recipes I make using dates, you want to make sure you're buying the medjool kind. I'll just say this, okay? If you have a first date with one of these dates, you will be having more. <laughs> I can't with myself. <laughs> Someone's got to hold me back for making another date joke because it will happen again. Okay, wait, this guy needs a little more almond butter. I'm so sorry I neglected you for a second. Okay. 
Okay, I am drowning in almond butter. All of my dates have been stuffed with the almond butter. They look really nice. They look ready to go out on a date. I need to stop. I'm done, I'm done, I promise. Now that I'm done stuffing all of the dates, I'm just gonna top it with a little bit of sea salt just to bring out that sweetness and balance everything out really nicely. I sometimes also like to use a salted almond butter too and that's gonna really create that naturally salty sweet combination, which we love. All right, and there you have it. My favorite warm stuffed dates, my coffee companion, my favorite date. In my opinion, you can never have enough dates, so I'm gonna show you how to make another recipe using dates. They're frozen, stuffed with almond butter, and then dipped in chocolate. So we've got our dates already pitted, and now we're gonna just go ahead and stuff them straight with almond butter. This should feel pretty familiar. Again, we're gonna have the almond butter find a nice little home in this pocket that we've created by pitting the dates. And remember, we are going to be submerging these in chocolate, so we want to make sure that we don't overfill it with almond butter so that it gets a bit messy, even though we love a bit of messy chocolate. So sometimes when I look at my freezer and I'm like, where did all of the ice cream go? I make these instead. They're also super quick to pull together and use mostly what you have in the pantry. And if you're not keeping dates in your pantry now, take this as your sign to start. If you have a nut allergy, you can even use a tahini or a sunflower seed butter as well. And then when you're done freezing them, they seriously taste like a candy bar. I know you think I'm crazy, but they do, I promise. I eat them for dessert. I eat them as a snack during the day. There's so many things you can do with them. They really are the perfect date. Dates are the perfect date. They are, I'm sorry. And now for my chocolate. All I'm gonna do is melt it in the microwave with a little bit of coconut oil. This is gonna help it get nice and smooth and glossy. We're gonna do this in 10 to 15 second increments and we're gonna keep stirring throughout so it gets really nice and smooth. Put that straight in there. Got my spoon at the ready for stirring and now I'm gonna head to the microwave. Now it is time to take our dates for a little swim in chocolate. I think they're excited about this, I'm not sure. Here's what we're gonna do. Grab a date, just drop it straight into the chocolate. Don't worry, it likes this. Roll it around so that the entire date is coated. Make sure you get that residual chocolate to kind of drip off the size of the spoon like this. And now we're just gonna place it back onto our parchment paper. And now we're going to chocolate swim and repeat. 
This is like a very luxurious bath, I have to say, for the dates. Because we've stuffed these dates with almond butter, we wanna make sure we're rolling it in the chocolate a little bit gently, just so that the almond butter doesn't come out. It's okay if you get a little messy here. It's part of the game. It's part of the date. No, that wasn't good. Serve this to your next date. That was better, that was good, that was good. Will I ever stop making date jokes after this? No, nope. don't expect me to stop. No, nope. it's not gonna happen. It's part of my brand now. One final date. <laughs> now, just for good measure, I'm gonna add a little drizzle of chocolate on top. It's gonna make it look really pretty. I don't believe in less is more when it comes to chocolate. I think we always need more chocolate. If you don't like chocolate, I want to understand you. Please drop me a line. But also, if you don't like chocolate, that's fine. Like, it's totally okay. But I still want to understand you. <laughs> okay. Now I'm just going to top them with a little flaky sea salt. This is really going to bring out that sweetness, balance out the chocolate. It is the perfect combination. I'm using a flaky sea salt as well, so it looks really pretty and a little fancy. Okay. We're salted, and now we're ready for the freezer. Can we take a moment? Look at how cute they look. These dates are ready for their date. Gotta stop making date jokes. Okay, these are honestly so good because of the chocolate, because of the almond butter, and that little flaky sea salt. They seriously taste like a candy bar. America's favorite candy bar. You know what I'm talking about. Plating my hot dates with my frozen dates. We're going on a lot of dates today. They honestly look so good. I love them. You know what? I need to take a picture of these to send to Hoda. I know this is her favorite snack. She's gonna love the chocolate ones too. These dates are fully ready for their close-up. It's almost unfair. All right, got the shot. I think it's time for me to taste. Mm, look at that. Mmm. It is so good. The dates are so sweet. The almond butter works so well. That salt, it's making everything come to life. I knew there's a reason why I eat these every day. Now that my dates are done, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Let's keep this between us. Granola is super easy to make at home. I'm gonna get the ingredients so I can show you how.
Granola is one of my favorite things to make at home. It's super versatile, so you can eat it solo, just munch on it as you're going about your day, or serve it with your favorite yogurt or milk. I'm gonna show you how to make my favorite nutty maple granola. For any granola recipe, I like to separate my wet and dry ingredients. We wanna make sure that all of the ingredients are thoroughly incorporated, so that's why I'm gonna do this. I've got some melted and cooled coconut oil here, and I'm just gonna add the rest of my ingredients. I'm using some of my almond butter. And this is gonna serve as a really nice mixture for the oats and nuts and seeds and whatever else we're adding to this granola to really cling onto so we can get those really crunchy clusters. And clusters are why we're all eating granola in the first place anyway, right? Almond butter is in. To sweeten it up, we're gonna add some maple syrup. This is the maple portion of my nutty maple granola. Maple adds this really nice golden richness to the granola. It's so good, it's really lightly sweet, so it's not too sweet. I've got all my wet ingredients in my bowl and now I'm just gonna whisk it until it's nice and smooth. Be careful here. Wear an apron. I don't do it, but you should. <laughs> we're whisking and we're whisking. And I just wanna whisk this until it's nice and smooth, making sure that all of the ingredients are thoroughly incorporated. Okay, wet ingredients, we're gonna set them aside. They're gonna hang out for later. And now I'm gonna get to work on my dry ingredients. Because I like to maximize the presence of clusters in my granola, it's very important to me, I'm gonna crush my nuts before I add them into my oats. So in order to do this, all you have to do Add your nuts into any sort of bag. Take a rolling pin or even a bottle and just get your stress out like this. You can also roll them if you're more delicate, but I'm really going for it today. I promise I'm a very patient person in general. We want them to be coarsely crushed, but it's okay if we have some bigger or smaller pieces because it's nice to have some texture with our granola. We like the crunch. Okay, I've got my bowl of oats right here. And now I'm just gonna add all of my dry mix-ins in. Adding my pecans in here. My stress pecans, the result of my stress pecans. I should also say that if you've got any nuts or seeds that have just been hanging out in your pantry for a little too long, this is a great opportunity to use them up. I'm adding some almonds in now. Just gonna use some cinnamon here. You can also use some nutmeg if you'd like, really whatever you'd like. And then we're gonna add a little pinch of salt. And now I'm just gonna fold in all my dry ingredients together. Make sure everyone gets to know each other. It's very friendly granola. Now that I've mixed all my dry ingredients together, I'm just gonna add in my wet ingredients and mix everything together. Okay, here we go. It's very aesthetically pleasing. This wet mixture is really what's gonna help this granola have clusters, so I like to make sure when I am mixing both the wet and dry ingredients together that everything is really nicely coated. Okay, listen closely. The really important thing when you're making granola is to make sure that everyone has some personal space. So we wanna make sure that all of the oats and nuts in this entire mixture is spread out in a very even layer so everyone has room to breathe. By spreading everything out, we're also going to make sure it bakes in a very even and crisp layer. And we're just patting everything down really gently, spreading it out nicely. We don't want to pat anything too hard to crush any of the nuts. Now that everything is spread out, I'm just going to go bake in the oven at 325 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes.
While our granola is baking, we want to make sure that we're stirring it every 10 to 15 minutes so we can ensure an even and crisp bake. Spread it out evenly again. And then back in the oven we go. The secret to super crispy, crunchy, clustery granola is actually letting it cool completely before you break it apart and serve it. I know it's tempting, but just don't touch it for a little bit, okay? This granola is completely cool, so now I'm just gonna break it apart and add it to my plate. I mean, you just can't. You can't say no to this. This is crazy. Look at how crunchy. The clusters are what I live for. It's the only reason I eat granola. Like, this is the most satisfying thing to me, ever. I will break it apart, though. Just a little bit. We want to maintain those clusters, though. I'll take granola over a granola bar any day. That's just me. And did you see how easy it was to throw this together? You literally just combine both your wet and dry ingredients and you've got this super delicious, one pan, amazing granola. And look at this bake. It's so even, so golden and crispy. Okay, it's time for me to taste. I'm waiting to dig into this cluster this entire time. Lightly sweet from the maple syrup, not too sweet, so it's a perfect breakfast companion. Or honestly, you could eat this at any time of the day. You could even top ice cream with this. It's a really nice, crisp, golden layer on top of some vanilla ice cream. Mmm, sign me up. You know what, my dad loves this recipe. I make it for him all the time. Let me send him a picture so he can be a little bit jealous of me in it. <laughs> so he can remember my face. He knows what I look like. <laughs> He's gonna be so jealous. Mm. So good. Speaking of my dad, this next recipe is inspired by him and something he used to make all the time. So I'm gonna go grab the ingredients and start popping some popcorn. This is a variation of a popcorn recipe that my dad used to make all the time. Poor guy, my mom, my sister and I would always steal some before he could even have a single kernel. So I guess this is redemption for him. I'm gonna show you how to make your popcorn really delicious, really flavorful with this spice infused olive oil mixture. So I've already popped my popcorn and now I'm just heating my pan on medium low heat and add a little bit of olive oil. You can use your favorite spices here, but I'm gonna use one of my favorites, which is some garam masala. 
This is a really common blend of Indian spices and it's really delicious, really warming, creates a very savory flavor in this popcorn. I'm gonna add this straight to my oil. Along with some cayenne pepper, this is gonna take it up a notch in the spice department because I like things very spicy. Finally, I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt. And now all we're gonna do is just stir our spices. Now the reason that we're heating the spices here in the oil is because nobody likes a raw spice. Raw spices are not cute to eat. So we want to cook the spices with the oil so they become fragrant, they become aromatic, and it just infuses a lot of flavor into your popcorn. I was so obsessed with popcorn in college, I'm pretty sure it's the only reason I made it through. I would just snack on it like all the time. It got me through my exams. Thank you, popcorn. It's done so much for me in my life. And you wanna make sure you continue to stir your spices in with the oil so it doesn't burn. We're only doing this for about a minute or so until you smell that delicious aromatic spice smell. You don't want it to smell too raw. When you allow the garam masala to cook in this oil, you can really smell all of those individual spices, the cumin, the cloves, the coriander. It smells so fragrant. So my spices and my oil smells really aromatic. I've cooked it for about a minute. Now it's time to just drizzle it over my popcorn. There we go. I'm just gonna shake it up so everything is fully incorporated in here. Now I'm gonna drizzle it over my popcorn. It smells so good. Now I'm just gonna toss it so that everything is well incorporated. This is just a really great way to make a flavor infused popcorn so that you're not just going with the plain salt, you're not just going with the plain butter, there's a little something extra going on. Now that my spices are fully incorporated in my popcorn, I'm gonna add a little bit of nutritional yeast. This adds a very cheesy and savory flavor to the popcorn without actually adding any cheese. Perfect. Mix that in a little bit. And then I'm gonna finish with a little pinch of salt. I have to show my dad that I made this. It's a little bit better than his. Don't tell him. <laughs> I'm so mean. <laughs> it smells so good. I seriously wish you could smell it. I cannot wait to dig in. So I'm just not gonna wait. I'm going to dig in. Oh, come on. Okay, this might be dramatic but I don't think I can eat regular popcorn ever again. Mmm, it's so good. And I would just know that I have a feeling you will not go back to regular salted popcorn. Butter? Who is she? Mmm, it's so good. It's really good, you guys should try this. The next time you get a snack attack, all I have to say is just don't panic. Remain calm, make these three recipes, they're so delicious and the best way to keep your days going. Whew. Hey guys. Super busy, cooking up a storm, but I have something exciting to tell you. Hashtag cooking is back, so tune into today all day. Okay, I got some in the oven, I gotta go. See you later. Hey, today all day, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada is sharing her favorite ways to use up any oats that you have lying around. First up, she's baking an oatmeal chocolate chip cookie that's healthy enough to eat for breakfast. Then, it's homemade granola with a savory twist.
If you like oatmeal raisin cookies, I will not judge you, but an oatmeal raisin cookie is simply not a cookie I want to be a part of, personally speaking for myself. I will opt for chocolate every single time. I know you have a little canister of oats sitting at the back of your pantry that maybe you're neglecting a little bit. But instead of teaching you how to make a traditional bowl of oatmeal, which I already know you know how to make, I'm gonna show you how to hashtag upgrade your oats. Today we're gonna to be making my favorite oatmeal chocolate chip cookies with some added fun, coconut, and then a really easy savory granola. How's that for a plot twist? Let's get started. Oats, they are having a moment. They're everywhere these days and for good reason. Oats are super versatile, they're really nutritious, and there's so much you can do with an oat to make it a star. But there are a lot of different varieties, so I thought I'd walk you through a few of my favorites. Welcome to my kitchen classroom. On today's agenda, Oats 101. These little guys are oat groats. I know, it's not the cutest name, but these are oats in their least processed form. They have a lot of fiber, and these are what they look like before they've been rolled out. They do take a bit longer to cook though, about 30 to 40 minutes, but they have a really nice nutty and chewy texture, which I find is really nice for a salad, similar to a barley or a farro. Next up, we've got my steel cut oats. These are simply oat groats that have been cut into this pinhead shape. Now, steel cut oats take about 20 to 30 minutes to cook. They've got a nice chewy texture, making it perfect for a slow weekend morning when you want to enjoy a bowl of oatmeal. Next up, we have got my oat MVP, rolled oats or old fashioned oats. These oats have been steamed and then rolled out into that iconic oat shape. These take only 10 to 20 minutes to cook, not too long, not too short, but they also have this really nice springy light texture without being too chewy. I find that old fashioned oats are perfect for just about anything. An oatmeal chocolate chip cookie, some granola. I use them so much in my kitchen. And finally, we have our instant oatmeal. These are the most processed form of oats from our little lineup here and what you commonly find in a little brown packet destined for your microwave. These are very mushy in texture, so I don't really cook with them or bake with them. But if you only have about one to three minutes in the morning to cook them, these are the oats for you. I won't judge you if you use them. When you're always stocked with oats, guess what you'll never run out of? Oat milk. Because that's right, you can make it yourself. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. All you need to make your own oat milk at home is some old fashioned oats, some cold water, and a good quality nut milk bag. When you're making your own oat milk, make sure to use old fashioned oats. Steel cut is gonna be a little bit too coarse and instant is gonna be too mushy. So we don't wanna do that. Now, I'm just gonna grab a measuring cup for my old fashioned oats and measure some out. Old fashioned oats secured. My blender is my BFF and this oat milk comes together just in your blender. I'm gonna add my old fashioned oats to my blender. We've got some cold water, make sure it's cold. We don't want any warm water here because the oats will get slimy. Nobody likes a slimy oat milk. Adding this in my blender. And finally, this is optional, but not if you're me, because I like a little touch of sweetness, a little bit of maple syrup. You can totally use a couple medjool dates too, if you'd prefer. Just a touch. You can even add a little dash of cinnamon too, if you're feeling like you want to live on the edge today with your oat milk. Now, all I'm going to do is blend it. Only 30 to 40 seconds. We don't want to over blend it because the oats will get kind of mushy. Okay, here we go. Oat milk is in our future. We're looking nice and creamy. Now, before I remove this from the blender, just want to show you, you can totally use a cheesecloth to strain, but I'm using a nut milk bag because it's a lot easier. I'm gonna prepare this in my pitcher. Now I'm just gonna pour in my oat milk. We're making oat milk. You just wanna squeeze it a little bit so you get all of that oat milk out. This is precious, we worked hard for this. 
Okay, we didn't really work that hard for this, but we still want to get everything out. Look at how creamy that looks too. Like that's some thick oat milk. I love it. And look at how this nut milk bag is catching all of those little pieces of oats. We don't want that in our oat milk. We want that to stay secure in the bag. That's why it's nice to get a good quality nut milk bag because then it makes it super easy to make your oat milk at home. All right, we're gonna set this aside. See you later. And now we have homemade, creamy, delicious oat milk. This stores well in the fridge for about five days. Make sure you stir it before you drink it because separation is totally normal. I like to use this oat milk in any recipe where I call for a non-dairy milk, whether that be in my chocolate chip cookie pie or even my date crumble bars. It's so delicious, it's so creamy, it's even amazing in your coffee. And you know what pairs really well with oat milk? Cookies. Luckily, I've got myself covered because we're gonna make my chocolate chip oatmeal cookies with a little bit of coconut. I'm gonna let this chill while I go grab the ingredients. I have been there and done that with traditional stovetop oatmeal and overnight oats. Plus, I would choose a cookie over those two any day. So, to solve my persistent desire for cookies at all hours of the day, I'm gonna show you how to make my favorite oatmeal chocolate chip cookie that's wholesome enough to eat for breakfast. So, let's get to it. I preheated my oven to 350 degrees and because I love being prepared, I have also lined my pan with some parchment paper. Now, we're gonna get to work on the wet ingredients. I'm gonna crack my egg in my bowl. Whisk that really nicely. We want no separation between the yolks and the whites. Okay. This looks great. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of almond butter. Mixing the egg and the almond butter together really well. All right, this looks smooth and creamy. Now I'm going in with my melted and cooled coconut oil. Straight in there. We are actually going to be adding some shredded coconut into these cookies, so I find that the coconut oil really complements that super well. It's also a nice butter replacement in these cookies too. Mixing everything together. Everyone needs to become friendly. Perfect. Now I'm gonna add some vanilla extract. Can't have my cookies without it. And finally, for my sweeteners, maple going in. Maple adds that really warm and almost breakfasty taste to these cookies. And then we're adding some coconut sugar. Coconut sugar and maple syrup are my favorite sweeteners to use together. I find that they complement each other really well. They create this really golden taste in these cookies. Because coconut sugar is really fragrant, it's gonna go really nicely with that coconut oil and that shredded coconut that we're gonna be adding into the cookies later. 
My wet mixture looks perfect, honestly. I have to give credit to myself. Now, I'm gonna move on to my dry ingredients. For these cookies, I'm using a combination of almond flour and oat flour. If you don't know what oat flour is, get ready to have your mind blown. All it is, is just oats ground up into a blender until you get that fine powder, like a flour. Then we get oat flour. How fun and convenient is that? Easy to make at home, you can also buy it from the store. Oat flour going in. We're having an oat moment with these cookies. We love oats. Gonna also add some almond flour. Almond flour is really dense, oat flour is really light, so I find that they create a really nice combination and a really nice texture in these cookies. Okay, we're gonna whisk that up. Whisking our almond flour and our oat flour together really nicely. And now, because I'm fun, I'm gonna add some shredded coconut. Make sure you buy unsweetened shredded coconut because we've got the sugar already, we don't need to add more into our coconut. Now, for our star. These would not be oatmeal chocolate chip cookies without some oats. So, I'm using old fashioned or rolled oats here. Oats going in. Time for a little baking powder. And a little pinch of salt. The salt is gonna balance out the sweetness, really bring it out, it's gonna heighten all of those flavors. Whisking everything together nicely, we want a fully incorporated dry ingredient mixture here. Dry mixture taking a journey. Beautiful. I'm gonna fold my dry and wet ingredients together until everyone is fully incorporated. So we wanna make sure we're not seeing any remnants of that flour mixture, right? We want it to be fully incorporated. You'll see how that color changes. Everyone looks really nicely incorporated, really well mixed. Thorough, we wanna do a thorough job here. I mean, listen, this is like this is like a bowl of oatmeal, right? This counts, a cookie, an oatmeal cookie, same thing. Okay, this is controversial. I'm gonna put my spatula down for this. If you like oatmeal raisin cookies, I will not judge you, but an oatmeal raisin cookie is simply not a cookie I want to be a part of, personally, speaking for myself. Um, I will opt for chocolate every single time. So, I'm gonna fold in some chocolate chips. I measure chocolate chips with my sole, as you can see. I will be saving these to top the cookies with before they go into the oven. I want a few more. I changed my mind. Just a few. Breakfast, anyone? <laughs> okay, we're gonna fold the chocolate in really nicely. And this is a beautiful cookie dough situation I've got here. Okay. Time to make our cookies. Perfect. I'm using a cookie scoop here just to get some nice, even cookies. Want them all to be about the same size and then they're gonna cook evenly too. That is a huge chunk of chocolate chips I just got. I'm not mad about it at all. Okay. And I'm just gonna use my fingers just to flatten them down slightly. Not too much, just a little. This one has so many chocolate chips, that's the one I'm going for. I already know this. I've already made up my mind. I like making these cookies at the start of the week because I'm eating them for breakfast. It's kind of nice to have on hand. And even if you have a different breakfast, okay? Even if you're having your eggs or whatever else you eat for breakfast, you can totally have one of these after with a little cup of coffee. How does that sound? Pretty good? I know, because I do it all the time. You know what these remind me of also? Just like a really glam granola bar. Like a granola bar, but like make it a cookie. I've got some extra dough here. I will be baking these off later, but I do wanna add a couple extra chocolate chips on top for fun. I went pretty heavy on the chocolate chips and the dough already. 
And I honestly love that for me. I'm gonna bake these in the oven 10 to 15 minutes until it's nice and golden brown around those edges. I'm so excited to have some oatmeal breakfast cookies after this. Cookies for breakfast, anyone? I mean, look at how textured they are, right? They've got the oats, they've got the chocolate chips, they've got coconut. There's a lot going on here. Perfect for breakfast, but also for any time of the day. I'm not gonna you know, say that I can't have this after dinner, because I can. I'm so excited to eat them. And you know what I'm gonna eat them with? Some homemade oat milk, because I'm having an oat moment today. And I'm just gonna have all of the oats. I mean, look at that. So fluffy. You know what this needs? You know what this needs? It needs to be dunked in some oat milk. It just has to happen. Okay. I gotta get my camera out first because this is a perfect photo op. All right, it's taking the plunge. <gasps> oh my God, okay. All right, here we go. I'm so good, I'm just losing cookies everywhere. Okay, I need a sip of oat milk. You might, and no disrespect to your bowl of oatmeal, but you might wanna abandon it after you try these cookies. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm being honest, I'm being honest. I'm going in for more. Mm. Someone hold me back. No, really, someone hold me back. Oh, you thought I was done helping you upgrade your oats? Well, you are mistaken because up next, I have my plot twist savory granola. I'm super excited to make it. I'm gonna go grab the ingredients.
When you think of granola, you're probably thinking of those sweet clusters of nuts and oats to top your yogurt. But have you ever thought about a savory version? I know it's a plot twist, but savory granola is one of my favorite snacks. I was inspired to make it by traditional Indian snack mixes, and I cannot wait for you to try it. We want the savory granola to have lots of flavor, so to start, we're gonna make a little olive oil spice mixture. In my bowl, I'm gonna add some extra virgin olive oil. Olive oil is gonna help us get that nice, crisp, golden color and texture that we really want. Now, for some more flavor, I'm gonna add some coconut aminos. Coconut aminos going straight in there. Coconut aminos are made from the sap of coconut palms, and it's actually very similar in taste to a soy sauce, but it's gluten-free. So if that's important to you, there you go. We always have to have spice. I always have to have spice. I can't live my life without it. So we're gonna add a couple of my favorites. Cayenne. Cayenne is gonna add some heat, some spice. It's gonna really kick this flavor up a notch. Now I'm gonna add some garam masala. The garam masala is a very common Indian spice blend. It contains pepper, cumin, cloves. It's super warming, super fragrant. I love using it in my savory granola. I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt. Nothing is complete without a little pinch of salt. And now because we have a lot of spice, a lot of flavor, a lot of savory elements going on here, I wanna add a little bit of honey just to balance out that saltiness. I love honey. Just a touch, not too much. That honey is gonna give that really nice, sweet and salty balance that I love so much. Now let's whisk everything together. Make sure it's really well incorporated. We want all of the spice, all of the flavor to be evenly, evenly whisked together. It's pretty potent. <laughs> all right. This is nice and well mixed. Now I'm gonna move on to my dry ingredients. I like using a variety of nuts and seeds here because it's really fun to play with different texture and flavor. Every single nut and seed has a different flavor profile, so it's fun to add them all together and just have a little crunch, a little texture, something different in every bite. So I'm gonna start with my sliced almonds. I use almonds so much in my kitchen, from almond butter to raw almonds. They're super versatile and I just love the taste. I'm gonna add some raw cashews, super buttery and delicious. Now we're gonna go for some pecans. Pecan, pecan, I say pecan. In there. I'm gonna add some pumpkin seeds. You can add sunflower seeds here too if pumpkin's not your jam. Pumpkin seeds add that nice green color too. It's kind of pretty. Okay, now we're gonna add some sesame seeds. These are gonna be so delicious when they're nice and toasty in the oven. Mm, I love it. Now, this wouldn't be granola without oats. We cannot have granola without our oats. Adding the oats straight into my mixture. Now we mix them all together. Make sure that you're using raw, unsalted nuts here. We are gonna be roasting them in the oven with some olive oil and spices, so you don't need to buy roasted and salted nuts. Look at how fun and textured this is. So many different colors. And it's about to get a lot of flavor. Time to add my olive oil mixture straight on top of my nuts, seeds, and oats. Leave no spice left behind. Come on, you can do it. Okay, now we're gonna mix everything together. We want a very well-spiced savory granola. So every piece has to be coated by some olive oil and spice. It already starts to smell so good, so flavorful. This is such a fun and easy portable snack too. We are looking nice and well-mixed. Now it's time for the pan. Make sure you get all of those little resistant oats. They'll have a better life as savory granola. Okay, make sure that you're spreading your granola out really well, really evenly. We want everyone to have personal space, some room to breathe. This way we can ensure a nice and even crisp bake. 
We are ready for the oven. I'm gonna bake this 45 to 50 minutes at 325 degrees in the oven. Make sure you toss it every 10 minutes or so to ensure that it gets nice and golden brown. Look at my gorgeous golden savory granola. I've let this cool completely. Make sure you let it cool for at least 15 minutes. First of all, it's a little bit too hot to handle as it comes out of the oven. And when you cool granola, it crisps up as it cools. I'm gonna store this in my cute little container, which I promise I can get the lid off because I'm strong. There we go. I love to store these in little mason jars or little jars like this, just so it's nice to have a snack on hand. So the next time you are craving a potato chip or a cracker, this is just a more unique and fun savory snack to snack on. You've got a lot of different flavors. You can customize it with your favorite nuts and seeds as well. So whatever you have in the pantry, you've got some sunflower seeds, you've got some walnuts, feel free to sub that in. Look at that nice golden color. So good. I've got most of my savory granola into my little jar. And you know what I also like to do with this? I like to put it on a salad. Think of this as the fun cousin to your croutons. Yeah, they're your, your crouton cousins. Crunchy, savory, really pretty. You've got those nuts and seeds and you've also got a lot of flavor there. Look how nice that looks. This is a super simple salad. I just did a little bit of olive oil, lemon juice, salt and pepper. This granola though, it adds a secret touch. Mmm! It's so good. It's so salty, but it's got heat and flavor. Wait, I need more. Like you've got so many things going on, right? Different nuts and seeds. Gives it a lot more texture. Makes it more interesting to eat. You've got something new in every bite. I mean, have you ever seen a salad topped with granola before? I think I have to document it. I mean, look at that, it looks so pretty. Croutons? I don't know you. I mean, come on. I'm obsessed, I'm obsessed. Sweet granola, I'm coming for you. I hope this has inspired you to upgrade your oats if you're neglecting them in your pantry. Let them live, let them live as savory granola, as some delicious oatmeal cookies. Oats are really an MVP. Say there today all day. Are you looking to ditch some dairy? Well, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Samadata remaking two classically creamy dishes without the cream. First up, she's gonna make a vegan mac and cheese with a velvety sauce. Then for dessert, Sama turns overripe bananas into a luscious, dairy-free, nice cream. Can you imagine if they started making like onion-scented candles? That would be such a crazy choice. I'd probably buy one. If you can't eat dairy, then don't worry, I got you. I'm always coming up with new ways to make creative, delicious dips, fillings, and desserts without any of the dairy. I really just wanna hashtag make dairy free cool. I'm gonna show you how to make two of my favorite recipes that are traditionally loaded with lots of cheese and milk. First up, my masala mac and cheese, and next, because we can never forget dessert, my banana cardamom ice cream. One of the first ways that I dabbled into cooking, and maybe it's a bit generous to say cooking, was through box mac and cheese. I used to love that mildly suspect bright orange powder. But today, we are making my masala mac and cheese. The flavor profile is a little bit more elevated, but still just as creamy and decadent. Let's get started. The first thing that we're gonna do is dice up my onion. So I wanted to add some cooked onions into the sauce because I think it adds a lot more flavor. We want different levels of flavor and spice and by cooking these onions down in some olive oil, it's really gonna get us there. I'm gonna peel this guy. I am just dicing my onion. 
right there. A little rough, don't worry, because we are going to blend it later. After it's been cooked, of course. I've just diced my onions, and now I'm just gonna heat up some olive oil on my pan. Okay, my olive oil is shimmering, time to add my onions. I also wanna make sure I'm seasoning my onions with some salt and pepper. A little salt, and some freshly ground black pepper. Okay, these onions look delicious. They look nice and golden brown. I'm gonna turn my stove off, set these aside to cool, and get to work on my creamy sauce. Before we get going on my sauce, I have to tell you about cashews. When you soak cashews, they absorb a lot of that water, expanding them and making them a lot easier to blend. Because they're so buttery, when you actually do blend them after they've been soaked, they can create creamy dips, dressing, sauces, desserts, mac and cheese sauce, anything, you name it. But if you skip soaking them, and please don't, you'll get a really crumbly and mealy sauce, and that's just not cute. It's really important that you soak your cashews for at least 24 hours overnight, or you can flash soak them for an hour in hot water. Best part about this mac and cheese is it comes together in this blender. What could be better? Mac and cheese in a blender? I'm on board. We're gonna add our cashews into our blender. Make sure when you're making this recipe that you only use raw cashews. No salt on it, no roasting. Because I want a little bit of a sweet taste and I want that nice orange color for this mac and cheese, I'm using a roasted sweet potato. I'm just gonna peel the skin off with my hands. By the way, if you're worried that I'm handling a hot potato, I'm not. This has been cooled. Don't worry about me, I'm okay. I'm just gonna take about half of this, pop it in my blender. You thought I forgot about my onions? You were wrong. They're going straight in here. Now to get that really delicious, cheesy, savory flavor, I'm using some nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is a really common vegan cheese replacement. Adding this straight in my blender. It adds a bit of umami as well. Now for my spices. This is a masala mac and cheese after all. Got some cumin. Adding a bit of cayenne. Cayenne gives me that heat. I want a little bit of spice in this masala mac. I'm gonna add some turmeric. Turmeric is not only delicious, but it also adds that really gorgeous yellow color that we're chasing for this mac and cheese. And finally, we've got some garlic powder. To help everything blend together, I've got some vegetable broth. Veggie broth is also a bit better than adding something like water because it's got a little bit more flavor in there. Okay, are you ready to blend? Okay, let's do it. And if you need to, feel free to scrape down the sides of the blender to get everything well incorporated. Boom. I'm add a little bit more salt, a little more pepper. Back to blending we go. Okay. I'm really pleased to announce that my mac and cheese sauce is done. Looks amazing. Time to make our pasta. Got my cute little elbows here. My water is boiling. Don't forget, please, please don't forget to salt your pasta water, okay? I'm gonna do that right now. Pasta water is salted. It's time for our pasta. So I am using elbows here for my little cute pasta shape. I wanted to get that very iconic mac and cheese vibe, but you can totally use whatever short pasta works for you. A shell would be nice here, penne would be nice here. Okay, so I'm just gonna fish for a piece, see how we're doing on doneness. This is the best way to check. Just pinch it with your fingers or just bite into it. Perfect. Our pasta is ready. Time to drain. Okay, don't drop the sama. <laughs> don't drop it. One more thing to do is just add our sauce to our pasta. I'm gonna add this into my bowl. I'm really excited about this sauce. Just so you know, this makes a lot of sauce. I like a saucy mac, but you can totally reserve some for later if you want it to be a little less saucy. All right, time to plate. <sighs> Sorry, I just gasped. 
I was just taken aback. It's so creamy. All right, little fresh parsley just to top. Little bit of color, little bit of green, little bit of herb, just to bring this out. And then I'm just gonna finish it with some freshly ground black pepper. Have you ever seen a more velvety mac and cheese? I just have to capture this. Here I go. This is gonna be an action shot. Okay, I think I got it. Time for me to dig in. I've never been more happy than this moment right now. <laughs> there's so much flavor going on, and it's so creamy. You would not believe there's no dairy in this. I'm not telling you to throw away your box mac and cheese, but um, I'm definitely telling you to give this a try. You will not regret it. Mmm. So good. It's me, and I can never have any dinner or lunch without a little bit of dessert. So up next, I've got my banana cardamom ice cream and you're absolutely gonna love it. I'm gonna grab the ingredients. If you thought that you needed an ice cream maker to make ice cream at home, then think again. My banana cardamom ice cream comes together in a blender and takes a little nice nap in the freezer to create the most luscious vegan ice cream. Let's make it. Listen closely. I hate wasting bananas. It's so sad. Ripe bananas, really spotty bananas, are perfect for so many different types of recipes and especially this ice cream. They help create that really luscious, creamy texture without any of the dairy. I've got my frozen bananas here. I'm just gonna pop them into my blender. When I freeze bananas, I like to cut them up in little pieces just to make it easier to blend. Really important that you're using ripe frozen bananas because we're not actually gonna add any added sugar to this recipe. All the sweetness is gonna come straight from those bananas. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little bit of creamy almond butter into my blender. Because the bananas are super sweet, I like adding a nut butter like an almond or even a peanut butter just to balance out that sweetness. I love using cardamom in this ice cream because it's got this really nice piney, fruity undertone. Really delicious. If you don't have it, don't worry. You can totally sub cinnamon instead. Now to help everything come together, I'm just gonna add a little bit of almond milk. Here's the important thing. We're not trying to go for a smoothie here, right? So we're just gonna add a little bit of milk just to get the blender going. Time to blend. Time to scrape down the sides of the blender. I'd rather scrape down the size of the blender a million times to get that really creamy, thick, almost soft serve consistency ice cream rather than add too much almond milk and be left with a smoothie. Can we just take a moment for my blender, please? It literally does the absolute most for me. It's key when I'm creating all of my delicious dairy-free recipes. Okay, I think we made it. 
I could eat this now, and you could too, but I do want a little bit of an ice cream scoopable consistency, so that's why I'm transferring it to the freezer. Okay, ice cream is in my container safely. It's ready for the freezer for an hour or more. I know, I know, I'm sorry, but patience is key here. Let's do it. My ice cream is done. A little patience gets us a very long way. I am just gonna cut some strawberries to top my ice cream with and then I'm gonna enjoy it. <laughs> no, I did not just sneak a strawberry. I have been waiting for a long time for my dessert, so it is time to scoop my ice cream. I'm very excited. <sighs> I just gasped yet again. Oh, you thought I was a single scoop girl? Think again. Oh, you thought I was a double scoop girl? Think once more. Time to top with some of my strawberries, just for some color, just for some freshness. I would say this looks too pretty to eat, but I'm for sure gonna eat it. I will take a picture though. Okay, I'm ready to taste. It is crazy that you can make something this creamy with frozen bananas. It's crazy, it's wild. The bananas are so sweet and we've got that almond butter to balance it out and then that cardamom brings all the flavors to life. The next time you're craving something super creamy and delicious but you can't have dairy, look, there's options for you. These are so easy to make. I made so many of my dairy-free recipes in my blender Easy to whip up, just as decadent, just as creamy and delicious without the dairy. Hold me back. I am going in again. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. This is seriously so good. It's like, the sweetness is perfect. It's not too much, it's not too little. It's like my little Goldilocks sweetness. Mm. It's so good. Mm. Who doesn't love a muffin? As for me, whenever I enter any bakery or cafe, my eyes go directly to the muffins. I am obsessed. Am I the hashtag muffin woman? 
I don't know, that's a question for another day. But I've always wanted to create my favorite bakery style muffins at home. So after a little testing, I came up with two that are always on rotation for me. First up, a blueberry muffin just sweetened with some honey and lemon poppy seed muffin tops with a cute lemon cashew glaze. I always bake with chocolate over fruit. That's typically my MO. But I will say, I always make a little exception when it comes to a blueberry muffin. They're just my favorite staple comfort baked good. But I was thinking, why should I go to a bakery when I can make one in my own kitchen? So let's get started. I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees and I've lined my little muffin tin with these cute muffin liners. They're so cute. Now I can start on my wet ingredients. First up, I've got one egg. Just cracked my egg in here. Gonna whisk it really well. I want no separation between the yolk and the whites. This looks nice and uniform. Now, I'm gonna add in my almond butter. I find that the almond butter kind of adds a really nice nuttiness to these muffins. It's so delicious. Gonna mix my egg and my almond butter together really nicely so it's well incorporated. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add my melted and cooled coconut oil. This is gonna serve as a nice butter replacement. Okay, and now I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract. And for my star, I cannot have my honey blueberry muffins without the honey, that would simply be wrong. I like to use local honey for these muffins especially because it's such an important flavor component. I really wanna use the good stuff. And finally, I want a little touch of acidity just to bring out all of those flavors, so I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh lemon juice. Perfect. Mix the lemon juice in there, it smells so good. Okay, my wet ingredients look perfect. They're well incorporated, they're well mixed, which means it's time for me to move on to my dry ingredients. I'm using almond flour for this recipe, which is honestly my favorite flour to bake with. It's super cakey and dense, so it creates a really nice texture in these muffins. I'm gonna add some baking powder and a little pinch of salt, just a little, perfect. Now I'm just gonna whisk my dry ingredients together and make sure everything's well incorporated. You know what time it is. <laughs> it's time to combine our wet and dry ingredients. We want an even, even muffin batter. It smells so good already. All right, I'm just gonna add a little bit of almond milk to help everything come together a bit better. This is looking great. Now, this is a blueberry muffin. So I've got my gorgeous fresh blueberries here. Just proceed with caution when you're folding your blueberries into the batter. We don't want them to burst. They're precious, they're delicate. Just like, be careful of their feelings, okay? Okay. We look nice and well incorporated here, so it's time for me to add them into my muffin tin. I like using a cookie scoop for cookies, for muffins, because it allows me to just capture even amounts of batter per muffin tin, per cookie. Makes it really consistent. And then you get a nice even bake, too. Perfect. All right, so all that's left to do is bake them. They're going in the oven 30 to 35 minutes. I'm really excited to see them on the other end of this. Um, should I open a bakery? Just wondering. They look so cute. I have let them cool for 15 minutes, which means that it's definitely time for me to eat them. Okay, let's take a look. I mean, come on. They look so good. Before I dive into these, okay, I'm gonna have to take a picture. I'm trying to start my own bakery. I gotta have some documentation of this moment. Pretty iconic stuff, I have to say. I think it's time for me to try them. I think I've waited long enough. Here's a question. Do you bite into your muffin or do you rip a piece off? I'm gonna be dainty today and rip a little piece off. Here I go. Okay, oh, almost lost a blueberry. Hmm, it's crazy how well the blueberries and the honey go together. Mm. It's so good. 
Speaking of muffins, if you only eat the muffin tops, don't worry, I'm not judging you. In fact, my next recipe is for you because I'm gonna be making my lemon poppy seed muffin tops. I'm gonna go grab the ingredients. You and I both know that we are kind of only here for the muffin tops, or at least that's my favorite part of the muffin. So for my next recipe, I thought I would whip up a lemon poppy seed muffin top with a lemon cashew glaze to satisfy all of you muffin top lovers out there. And I know you're out there. I preheated my oven to 350 degrees and because I love being prepared, I have lined my pan with parchment paper and now I get to work on my wet ingredients. All right, I'm gonna crack two eggs. Now I'm gonna add in my melted and cooled coconut oil. All right, whisking that nicely. I'm using maple syrup and coconut sugar to sweeten these muffin tops. They're my two favorite sweeteners. They add a really nice, robust taste, especially when paired together. Adding my maple syrup. Reminds me of pancakes and waffles, but it's kind of better in a muffin. This is a lemon poppy seed muffin top, which means we can't make it without the lemons, right? First, I'm gonna zest some lemons. I love using the lemon zest. It really amplifies that lemon flavor in these muffin tops. Now, I'm gonna juice my lemons. Because I love precision, <laughs> I'm gonna juice my lemons straight into this measuring cup so I know exactly how much I'm using. Okay, we've got our lemon juice and now we're just gonna add it straight into the rest of our wet ingredients. Mix that up really nicely. And for one more layer of our sweetness, I'm gonna add some coconut sugar. Super warm, it's rich, it's golden. All right, our dry ingredients, very important. Just as important as our wet ingredients. Here, I'm using a combination of almond flour and oat flour. I find that almond flour is pretty dense. The only ingredient is almonds. And with oats, it's a little bit lighter. I'm gonna add some baking powder, a little pinch of salt to bring out all of that sweetness. Just a little. I'm gonna whisk this together. Just for a little something extra, I'm gonna add in some rolled oats. I find that this gives a lot of texture. It's really nice to have in these muffin tops. And because I'm really trying to recreate that iconic lemon poppy seed muffin, we have to have our poppy seeds. Okay, this looks really nice. It's time to combine our wet and dry ingredients. And add this in, perfect. Just gonna fold everything in super gently. Okay. This looks perfect. Time to use my giant cookie scoop and scoop these onto my pan. I like using these because it allows me to get a really nice uniform muffin top. So they're all even, they're all the same size. You know what's really great about a muffin top? You don't need a muffin tin to make them. Just use your cookie sheet. It's a game changer. These are ready for a little journey in the oven, 350 degrees for about 30 minutes or until it's nice and golden brown around the edges. Let's go.
I've let my muffins cool for about 20 minutes and you know what they need. You know what they're ready for? A little glaze. I'm gonna just preface this for you. I just wanna tell you that this glaze is kind of like a cross between a glaze and a frosting. So I do tend to call it a glosting. And I know I made that word up and I'm honestly pretty proud of myself for it. So let's make our glosting. To make this really creamy, delicious glaze slash frosting, AKA glosting, we are going to be using some cashews. I've soaked these cashews and when you soak them, it actually allows them to absorb that liquid and become really nice and tender and plump. This is gonna be the perfect thing to just blitz up in our blender because it's gonna be really luscious and smooth. I drained the water from my soaked cashews and I'm just gonna pop them in my blender. To complement that gorgeous lemon flavor in our lemon poppy seed muffin tops, I'm going to add some lemon juice into my blender, into my glossing. Now, to sweeten this up, I'm gonna add some maple syrup. Time for a little oat milk. Finally, to bring out all of those flavors, balance everything out, a little pinch of salt. Now I'm just gonna blend this up. Look at this gorgeous glossing. All right, we're ready to put this glaze on. Let me give you some options because we love options. You can do a little drizzle like this. It's so pretty. It's so thick and creamy. Do a little delicate, unfussy drizzle. Or if you want to really commit, you can just gloss that whole thing. Don't be shy. Getting it to really fall over the sides like that. It's really good. One last thing to really finish it off, seal the deal, a little extra poppy seed garnish. Those poppy seeds add some nice nuttiness. Gotta take a picture. I mean, <laughs> that frosting, it like, who gave the frosting permission to do that? Right there. It's almost unfair. Now it's my time to eat. My turn to eat. It's pretty, right? Okay, I'm ready. You know what's the worst thing in a lemon baked good? Not enough lemon. This is so tart, perfectly sweet. I have no rules for myself. Mmm. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like I found a new calling in life. And I think it might be to open a muffin store. We'll have plenty of muffin tops, plenty of regular muffins. I hope this inspired you to make muffins at home. I mean, this is so easy to make. The frosting slash glossing, also very easy. I just hope you never go without a muffin again in your own home. Today all day, coming up on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada is sharing her favorite dinner recipes that also make great leftovers. If you happen to be dining solo, these weeknight meals are hearty, healthy, and best of all, pretty easy to make, and you'll have a lot to share. I just love the smell of ginger and garlic together. It reminds me of my mom. Aw. It was so cute of me. <laughs> Sometimes it kind of feels like you need an occasion to cook. But guess what? You don't need to be going to a dinner party to make delicious food for yourself. Cause you know what? A party for one? It's hashtag still a party. So I'm gonna show you how to get this party started with my delicious, flavorful, best doll ever and a crunchy, creamy kale salad. Dal is a staple in Indian cooking. It was always on my dinner table growing up, thanks to my mom. My mom and I still shop for our lentils at Indian markets, but you can get them wherever you get your groceries. Little tip for cooking lentils, super important to always rinse them before you cook them. You wanna rinse them until the water runs clear so we get rid of any debris, and then we're gonna soak them. This will allow it to cook faster, and you can soak them either overnight or at least up to 30 minutes. I have my pre-soaked lentils here, and now all I'm gonna do is drain the water out, like so. Get any residual lentils out. Can't leave any behind. They'll feel left out. 
okay? I'm gonna let these hang out for a bit while we prepare the base of our dal. I've heated my stove to medium heat and now I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil, let that heat up, and then I'll work on my onions, garlic, and ginger. Adding a bit of olive oil here. Let that heat up. And now, I'm gonna talk about my aromatics. So, onions, garlic, and ginger. I cannot imagine any dal without these base ingredients. They're the aromatics that really impart a lot of flavor. It's gonna become really deep and rich and flavorful, especially when paired with a fat like olive oil. I've got one whole onion that I've diced here, and I'm just gonna add it into my oil. We love that sizzle. And I just wanna saute the onions until they're nice and tender and translucent. I'm adding them separately away from the ginger and garlic because I don't want these guys to burn while I cook them with onions. So while my onions are cooking, I'm gonna work on my ginger and garlic. And by work on, I mean grate them. I'm using five cloves of garlic here because I love a garlic moment. If that scares you, you can take it down a notch, but I'm always gonna keep it up a notch. I'm just grating this on a microplane until they're nice and really fine. Grating the garlic this fine is gonna allow it to impart a lot of flavor onto this dal, especially when paired with those onions. I'm gonna be grating these forever. <laughs> Don't neglect your onions, okay? I wanna make sure these are happy too. Love garlic, I love garlic. No shame in my garlic game. So I'm adding five. Five cloves. We're starting off strong. This recipe is truly one of my favorite plant-based meal options because it's super flavorful, but it's also packed with protein from the lentils, really warming spices. It's one of my favorites. I can't believe I'm microplaning and also looking at a camera. <laughs> I love that for me. <laughs> okay, garlic there. Now it's time for our ginger. Again, we can't neglect our onions. We want them to be tender and translucent and a little bit golden before we add the garlic and the ginger, just so we have already some caramelization going on before we hit the garlic and onions. Microplaning the garlic and the ginger is nice because it almost forms this paste, so it's gonna be really easy to cook in with our onions as well. Going with my ginger. Ginger is super healthy for you, and actually so is garlic. I just love the smell of ginger and garlic together. It reminds me of my mom. Aww. That was so cute of me. I know my heart is warm too. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm still grating this ginger. You can leave, I'll still be here grating ginger. <laughs> this is why I have only one bicep on my right arm. <laughs> because of my ginger grating skills. When you cook the onions and garlic and ginger in a fat like olive oil, it's gonna really break down those flavors so it becomes super flavorful and aromatic. We want that when we're pairing it with something like a dal. I'm all done with my ginger. Got my ginger, garlic, minced, grated situation here. My onions are looking tender, translucent, a little golden around the edges. So now it's the perfect time to add my ginger and garlic. You can see how it's kind of a paste. This is gonna be great for that flavor. I'm gonna cook the garlic and ginger in with the onions until all of the flavors really incorporate and it starts to brown a little bit. It smells so good. Now that my garlic and ginger have started to brown in with the onions, I'm gonna add my masala for my spices. My favorites to use here are my cayenne, my turmeric, cumin, and coriander. It's really important that you do roast these spices because you don't want that raw smell or that raw taste. You want it to be super well browned so that it's aromatic. It smells so good. Now that my masala smells really nice, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> now that my masala smells really nice and toasty, I'm gonna go ahead and add my tomato paste. I'm using tomato paste here because I really like to impart that really deep tomato flavor. And when you brown this tomato paste, it's gonna taste so good. When you're cooking the tomato paste, you want it to turn a very deep, dark red brick color. And again, nobody likes that raw tomato taste or smell, so you wanna really cook it through. Now that I've cooked my tomato paste in with my masala, it's time to add my crushed tomatoes. I'm using canned tomatoes here. 
There is no shame here. I love a canned tomato. I love convenience. You can use diced tomatoes as well. I love a canned tomato moment. I think especially if you're cooking for one, there's no reason why you shouldn't use what's already in your pantry. You wanna cook these tomatoes for about three to five minutes until they reduce and darken in color. Cooking the tomatoes in with the onions, garlic, ginger, and spices is gonna allow it to be a lot more flavorful. Lentils themselves don't have a ton of flavor on their own, so that's why adding all of these different ingredients and spices is gonna be really delicious for the actual doll itself. I'm gonna season with a bit of salt and pepper here. Now I'm gonna add some vegetable broth. And now we're gonna add some coconut milk. Instead of using a cream or a ghee or a butter, we're using coconut milk to give that same really delicious creamy flavor, but without the dairy. Now we're just waiting for it to come to a boil. We're just waiting. We're a little impatient, but we're waiting. <laughs> we're almost there. We're making progress. I love adding coconut milk to lentils because it makes them super creamy. It looks like we're boiling. Now that we're boiling and in business, I'm gonna reduce to a simmer and let it cook for five more minutes. Mmm, smells so good. Now we're gonna add our lentils. We're gonna simmer this for about 30 minutes until the lentils are soft and the curry gets really nice and thick. It looks so creamy already. Just wait till it's done though. All right, see you later. In about 30 minutes, so you know what that means, my doll should be ready. It's looking so nice, so thick and delicious, but there are a couple more things that I wanna add. I'm gonna add in a little bit of sneaky spinach. This is not really traditional, but I do like to sneak some greens in where I can. Just chopped it up. Gonna add that straight in there and stir it up until it wilts. going in there. So you're just gonna stir the spinach in until it wilts. Look at how thick that is. It looks so good. And the green adds some nice contrast to the red and yellow lentils, so it looks really aesthetically pleasing as well. Ooh, it looks so pretty. I'm also gonna add some fresh lemon juice, just for some acidity. You've got a lot of heavy flavors here, so it's really nice to add a bit of tang at the end. Straight into my pot. We love a little lemon zing. Mix that lemon juice straight in there. I'm gonna finish this all off by adding some fresh cilantro. The tender stems are okay, but I like to remove the thicker stems because those are a bit more bitter. 
You can totally chop this if you'd like, but I'm just gonna tear it roughly. So I kind of like those big pieces of cilantro. Oh, it's so pretty. Almost too pretty to eat. Keyword, almost. And now it's time for me to serve myself. This dal is super versatile because you can eat it straight up as a soup, or you can also serve it with some naan or some rice. Look at how thick that is too. Ooh, it's so creamy. Here's my sneaky spinach. Can't leave them behind. And then to garnish, I'm just gonna add a little bit more cilantro on top. Just a little for the picture, you know? This looks so pretty. I have to send a picture to my mom. She's gonna be so proud of me. Oh, and I gotta get that naan and rice in there too. This is such a party for one. Like, I love this for me. This is an amazing dish because it stores really well too, so you can totally freeze it or keep it in the fridge for up to a week. I think it is time for me to taste it. I'm gonna go in straight up. Mm. I think my mom and I need to have a doll off. This is really good. I think this would impress her. Don't mind me while I take another few bites of this doll, but next I'm gonna show you a kale salad that you are absolutely going to love. Mmm, so good. You might be thinking, another kale salad? Sama, did we really need another kale salad? And to that, I say yes, we need this one. It is my favorite creamy, crunchy, savory kale salad that's really gonna make you want to eat your greens. The first step that we're gonna do to make this salad is make our croutons. This is a great way to use up any of your leftover stale bread. Your stale bread is not destined for the trash, it's destined to be croutons. All right, here's my loaf of bread. I'm just gonna slice this up, dice it a bit, and then we're gonna season it. When you're slicing bread, always remember to use a serrated knife so that I can cut through the bread a lot easier. So I really like nice, thick, and crunchy croutons, so I'm gonna cut the bread slices pretty thick so we can get it there. Should be good. Now I'm just gonna dice up these slices of bread. There's nothing better than a crouton in a salad. It really just adds that nice, crunchy, savory element. Plus, I will really just eat bread like whenever I can get an opportunity. 
this is a great opportunity. Sourdough croutons are my favorite because it's got that nice tang and with the savory elements that we're gonna add, like the spices, it's gonna be so good. I'm one of those people that likes the end piece of a loaf of bread. They exist, I'm one of them. Now that I've got my croutons, all I'm gonna do is drizzle them with some olive oil and then season with salt, pepper, and red pepper flakes. Seasoning with some salt. Some pepper. You can use your favorite seasonings here as well. But I love these three. Now I'm just gonna toss them. And you know what, this is a dinner for one, me being the one. So I'm just gonna toss this with my hands. Make sure the olive oil and spices really nicely coat the bread. These look nice and evenly seasoned, so now I'm just gonna transfer them to my parchment lined pan. I wanna make sure that these are nice and spread out so they get a really crisp and even bake. So I might even reserve some of these to bake off later so I can get that nice crisp crouton. Now, I'm just gonna throw them in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes at 425 degrees. Make sure you stir them once during baking. Well, guess what? My croutons are done. They look nice and golden and crisp. So I'm just gonna let them hang out and cool while I make my dressing. For the base of my salad dressing, I'm using tahini. If you don't know what tahini is, it's simply sesame seeds that have been ground up into a paste that's similar in texture to a peanut butter. It is my favorite savory grounding base for sauces and dressings. To my tahini, I'm gonna add a little bit of mustard. Just for a bit of flavor. I'm gonna add some extra virgin olive oil. Just a little. I'm gonna add some fresh lemon juice to this dressing to balance out the earthiness of the tahini. I also love a little tang in my dressings. It's gonna be so good. You want your salad dressing to be really bright and flavorful, especially when we're pairing it with a tougher green like a kale. All right, my lemon is in. I'm gonna whisk this a bit. Now I'm gonna add some of my spices. Got some freshly ground black pepper. Some salt. And for a little bit of spice, this seems to be the trend, some red pepper flakes. Now I'm just gonna whisk all of this together. You'll notice that this dressing is starting to seize, which means that it's becoming a little bit difficult to mix. So all we're gonna do is add a little bit of cold water to help everything come together. You can add more or less water to get the dressing to your desired consistency. 
To me, a tahini-based dressing is really similar to a Caesar dressing, so I really like to use it on kale because there's nothing better than a really delicious kale Caesar. Look at how creamy this is. And no dairy. This looks really delicious and creamy to me. So I'm gonna set this aside and get to work on my kale. To prepare my kale, all I'm gonna do is remove these tough stems. I don't love these stems because they're a little bit too fibrous, so I really don't want them at my party. You can just tear it straight off and discard the stems. You could use a knife to chop this up, but tearing it is a lot more fun. Kale is a really good salad green because it's got all of these ridges that allow the dressing to really get all up in there. See ya. I like to keep the kale in bigger pieces here because when I marinate it in the dressing, it's gonna wilt down a little. I'm a kale whisperer. We're making kale fun again. Really? You thought you didn't need another kale salad? You were wrong. This is the only kale salad you'll ever need. And I'm not biased at all. This is completely impartial. It's not like this is my favorite kale salad or anything. Again, you could have definitely used a knife, but I just made the life choice not to. It's a lot more fun to tear it. Just gonna add my kale to my bowl. And this is where this dinner for one party gets really fun. I get to become a kale masseuse. I'm gonna add this dressing into my kale and just massage it so that the dressing gets all up into the ridges of the kale. Pouring that dressing straight in there. Okay. And now I'm just gonna use my hands, they are clean, and massage my kale. Massaging your kale is super important because it helps to break down those tough fibers in the kale and it really gets the dressing all evenly coated inside the kale. Look at it! The dressing is already coating it super nicely and it's becoming even softer. Okay, I got a little bit too excited massaging the kale so now I'm gonna go rinse my hands off. The kale has really had a nice massage. It's feeling super zen so it's time to set it aside and I'm gonna prepare my add-ins. So I'm adding some tomatoes into the salad to add those really nice bursts of sweetness and it's gonna complement both the kale and the dressing really nicely. You can use grape tomatoes here, you can use cherry tomatoes. I find that these are a lot nicer and sweeter so that's why it's gonna be a great complement to this kale salad. That kale is so lucky though, it got a super long massage. <laughs> My favorite part about this kale salad is that you've got a lot of crunchy elements like these sunflower seeds and the croutons and some creamy elements like these beans and avocado. So I'm gonna go ahead and dice my avocado. So pretty. To dice this, I'm gonna dice it in the skin. So I'm just going to create the dicing inside so it makes it a lot easier to scoop right out and into my salad. I'm creating little hashtags in honor of hashtag cooking. And then I'm gonna add into my salad. Scoop it straight out. Make sure you get all the way to the peel, to the skin, so that you can remove the avocado easily, like so. Okay, this avocado is a bit resistant. It's fine. <laughs> All right, another half. Now we're moving on to another creamy component, my beans. These are gonna be really delicious because they're gonna add some protein, but also be super velvety and creamy in the salad. Add these straight in. I'm using white beans or cannellini beans here, but you can use whatever bean you'd like. Now I'm gonna add some sunflower seeds for another crunchy textural element. I'm gonna reserve some for the top. You can even use pumpkin seeds here if you'd like. And finally, for my croutons. Perhaps the reason you're interested in the salad in the first place? So these guys, I won't tell. 
I'm like kind of there with you. I'm just kidding, I love everything in this salad. I'm gonna reserve some croutons for the top as well, just to get that crunchiness. Now I'm gonna to toss. Now I'm just gonna to toss my salad together. There's so many fun elements going on here. It's a very exciting salad. And it's kind of pretty too. You got the tomatoes, which are nice and bright. Avocado. To finish it off, I'm gonna add some sunflower seeds on top. We're a little bit about aesthetics here. Not gonna front. And some croutons too. And this is my kale salad dinner for one, which also means that I can eat out of this bowl and no one's really gonna know or care because it's just me. This is such a glamorous kale salad that I cannot eat it without taking a picture first. This will inspire any kale hater or kale skeptic to eat their kale, I promise. Just try it out. Now it's my turn to try it out. And even if I don't finish this all right now, this stores super well because it's just gonna marinate in its dressing for longer and get even more flavorful. Here I go. You just gotta get a little bit of everything. Some of the kale, the crouton, the tomato. Maybe it's too much for me to get a bit of everything, but I'm gonna try. Okay. I really am trying to get a bit of everything and it's not gonna work. Will it work? Okay. Here I go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mmm. I mean, crunch from the sunflower seeds. Wait, I need a crouton. <laughs> really crunchy. <laughs> so good. Can you hear that? You can hear that? Mmm. You know what? I think they're gonna be a lot of kale converts after they try the salad. We are back. I'm Anthony Contrino and it is time to get saucy. We've got a brand new kitchen and new episodes coming your way this summer. Tune in to Today All Day, Mondays at 11 a.m. Today all day, up next on Hashtag Cooking, Sama Dada has the cure to your midday munchies. She's gonna whip up four easy snacks so you'll always be prepared when hunger strikes. First up, Sama making one of Hoda's favorite sweet treats, dates stuffed with almond butter that can be served hot or cold. Then she bakes up a simple super maple almond granola. And finally, she's making popcorn that's spiced with garam masala. Say bye bye to butter with a spicy snack. I'll just say this, okay? If you have a first date with one of these dates, you will be having more. <laughs> I can't with myself. <laughs> I cannot go a single day without snacking. Whether I'm at home or on the go, it is simply hashtag always snack time. Honestly, a world without snacking is simply not one I want to live in. So I cannot wait to show you three of my favorite weekly snack staples, my delicious stuffed dates, warm and frozen, my nutty maple granola, and my delicious masala popcorn. I love dates, and no, I'm not talking about the romantic kind, I'm talking about the medjool kind. They are my favorite sweet snack to eat throughout the day, and I'm gonna show you how to make them two ways, warmed and stuffed, and frozen and dipped in chocolate. Most dates come with pits, so I've actually already pitted these. I've got about 10 here, 
So I'm just gonna now take them on a little journey to the microwave for about 10 to 15 seconds, just to get them really nice and warm and juicy. first date or a second date when you have 10 dates ready to be stuffed with almond butter. <laughs> Warming the dates brings out their already naturally golden and caramel flavor and then when you stuff them with almond butter, the heat actually allows the almond butter to melt so it gets really nice and gooey and delicious. I really already want to eat one right now. <laughs> okay, we're going to start stuffing them. So I've got a creamy almond butter here. You can also use a crunchy almond butter. You can use a peanut butter, a cashew butter. If there are any nut butters that you're harboring in your pantry, this will be a great time to use them. I'm pretty generous here. I would say I use about a teaspoon to two teaspoons just because I like a lot of almond butter, but you can totally choose however amount works best for your life. Because we've pitted the dates, it actually serves as a really nice pocket for the almond butter to just sit in, a little home, you know? It's like this date was meant for almond butter. You know what I mean? All right. Good form, I think. And I'm just gonna continue with the rest of my dates. So actually, Hoda saw this recipe on my Instagram and has now deemed it to be her favorite snack. You take a date, and remember I told you the whole thing? Yes. You nuke it, you put in some dark chocolate and, and some I almond you butter. Yeah. Do you know what I like? <laughs> I like the melted chocolate in the peanut buttery nut butter thing with the salt. So Hoda, if you're watching this, it's for you. You can kind of see how when I put the almond butter inside this little pocket, it starts to melt a little bit and looks so gooey. Oh. It's like a little river of almond butter that I want to swim in. It's a lucky date. <laughs> I crack only myself up. So for this recipe and a lot of the other recipes I make using dates, you want to make sure you're buying the medjool kind. I'll just say this, okay? You have a first date with one of these dates. You will be having more. <laughs> I can't with myself. <laughs> Someone's got to hold me back from making another date joke because it will happen again. Okay, wait, this guy needs a little more almond butter. I'm so sorry I neglected you for a second. Okay. Okay, I am drowning in almond butter. All of my dates have been stuffed with the almond butter. They look really nice. They look ready to go out on a date. I need to stop. I'm done, I'm done, I promise. Now that I'm done stuffing all of the dates, I'm just gonna top it with a little bit of sea salt just to bring out that sweetness and balance everything out really nicely. I sometimes also like to use a salted almond butter too and that's gonna really create that naturally salty sweet combination, which we love. All right, and there you have it. My favorite warm stuffed dates, my coffee companion, my favorite date.
In my opinion, you can never have enough dates, so I'm gonna show you how to make another recipe using dates. They're frozen, stuffed with almond butter, and then dipped in chocolate. So we've got our dates already pitted, and now we're gonna just go ahead and stuff them straight with almond butter. This should feel pretty familiar. Again, we're gonna have the almond butter find a nice little home in this pocket that we've created by pitting the dates. And remember, we are going to be submerging these in chocolate. So we wanna make sure that we don't overfill it with almond butter so that it gets a bit messy. Even though we love a bit of messy chocolate. So sometimes when I look at my freezer and I'm like, where did all of the ice cream go? I make these instead. They're also super quick to pull together and use mostly what you have in the pantry. And if you're not keeping dates in your pantry now, take this as your sign to start. If you have a nut allergy, you can even use a tahini or a sunflower seed butter as well. And then when you're done freezing them, they seriously taste like a candy bar. I know you think I'm crazy, but they do, I promise. I eat them for dessert. I eat them as a snack during the day. There's so many things you can do with them. They really are the perfect date. Dates are the perfect date. They are, I'm sorry. And now for my chocolate. All I'm gonna do is melt it in the microwave with a little bit of coconut oil. This is gonna help it get nice and smooth and glossy. We're gonna do this in 10 to 15 second increments and we're gonna keep stirring throughout so it gets really nice and smooth. Put that straight in there. Got my spoon at the ready for stirring and now I'm gonna head to the microwave. Now it is time to take our dates for a little swim in chocolate. I think they're excited about this, I'm not sure. Here's what we're gonna do. Grab a date, just drop it straight into the chocolate. Don't worry, it likes this. Roll it around so that the entire date is coated. Make sure you get that residual chocolate to kind of drip off the sides of the spoon like this. And now we're just gonna place it back onto our parchment paper. And now we're going to chocolate swim and repeat. This is like a very luxurious bath, I have to say, for the dates. Because we've stuffed these dates with almond butter, we wanna make sure we're rolling it in the chocolate a little bit gently, just so that the almond butter doesn't come out. It's okay if you get a little messy here. It's part of the game. It's part of the date. No, that wasn't good. Serve this to your next date. That was better, that was good, that was good. Will I ever stop making date jokes after this? No, nope. don't expect me to stop. No, nope. that's not gonna happen. It's part of my brand now. One final date. <laughs> <laughs> now, just for good measure, I'm gonna add a little drizzle of chocolate on top. It's gonna make it look really pretty. I don't believe in less is more when it comes to chocolate. I think we always need more chocolate. If you don't like chocolate, I wanna understand you. Please drop me a line. But also, if you don't like chocolate, that's fine. Like, it's totally okay. But I still wanna understand you. <laughs> Okay. Now I'm just gonna top them with a little flaky sea salt. This is really gonna bring out that sweetness, balance out the chocolate. It is the perfect combination. I'm using a flaky sea salt as well, so it looks really pretty and a little fancy. Okay, we're salted. And now we're ready for the freezer. Can we take a moment? Look at how cute they look. These dates are ready for their date. Gotta stop making date jokes. Okay. These are honestly so good because of the chocolate, because of the almond butter and that little flaky sea salt. They seriously taste like a candy bar. America's favorite candy bar. You know what I'm talking about. Plating my hot dates with my frozen dates. 
We're going on a lot of dates today. They honestly look so good. I love them. You know what? I need to take a picture of these to send to Hoda. I know this is her favorite snack. She's gonna love the chocolate ones too. These dates are fully ready for their close-up. It's almost unfair. All right, got the shot. I think it's time for me to taste. That. Mm. It is so good. The dates are so sweet. The almond butter works so well. That salt, it's making everything come to life. I knew there's a reason why I eat these every day. Now that my dates are done, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Let's keep this between us. Granola is super easy to make at home. I'm gonna get the ingredients so I can show you how. Granola is one of my favorite things to make at home. It's super versatile, so you can eat it solo, just munch on it as you're going about your day, or serve it with your favorite yogurt or milk. I'm gonna show you how to make my favorite nutty maple granola. For any granola recipe, I like to separate my wet and dry ingredients. We wanna make sure that all of the ingredients are thoroughly incorporated, so that's why I'm gonna do this. I've got some melted and cooled coconut oil here, and I'm just gonna add the rest of my ingredients. I'm using some of my almond butter. And this is gonna serve as a really nice mixture for the oats and nuts and seeds and whatever else we're adding to this granola to really cling onto so we can get those really crunchy clusters. And clusters are why we're all eating granola in the first place anyway, right? Almond butter is in. To sweeten it up, we're gonna add some maple syrup. This is the maple portion of my nutty maple granola. Maple adds this really nice golden richness to the granola. It's so good. It's really lightly sweet, so it's not too sweet. I've got all my wet ingredients in my bowl, and now I'm just gonna whisk it until it's nice and smooth. Be careful here. Wear an apron. I don't do it, but you should. <laughs> we're whisking, and we're whisking. And I just want to whisk this until it's nice and smooth, making sure that all the ingredients are thoroughly incorporated. Okay. 
wet ingredients. We're gonna set them aside. They're gonna hang out for later. And now I'm gonna get to work on my dry ingredients. Because I like to maximize the presence of clusters in my granola, it's very important to me, I'm gonna crush my nuts before I add them into my oats. So in order to do this, all you have to do, add your nuts into any sort of bag, take a rolling pin or even a bottle, and just get your stress out, like this. You can also roll them if you're more delicate, but I'm really going for it today. I promise I'm a very patient person in general. We want them to be coarsely crushed, but it's okay if we have some bigger or smaller pieces because it's nice to have some texture with our granola. We like the crunch. Okay, I've got my bowl of oats right here. And now I'm just gonna add all of my dry mixins in. Adding my pecans in here. My stress pecans, the result of my stress pecans. I should also say that if you've got any nuts or seeds that have just been hanging out in your pantry for a little too long, this is a great opportunity to use them up. I'm adding some almonds in now. Just gonna use some cinnamon here. You can also use some nutmeg if you'd like, really whatever you'd like. And then we're gonna add a little pinch of salt. And now I'm just gonna fold in all my dry ingredients together. Make sure everyone gets to know each other. It's very friendly granola. Now that I've mixed all my dry ingredients together, I'm just gonna add in my wet ingredients and mix everything together. Okay, here we go. It's very aesthetically pleasing. This wet mixture is really what's gonna help this granola have clusters, so I like to make sure when I am mixing both the wet and dry ingredients together that everything is really nicely coated. Okay, listen closely. The really important thing when you're making granola is to make sure that everyone has some personal space. So we wanna make sure that all of the oats and nuts in this entire mixture is spread out in a very even layer so everyone has room to breathe. By spreading everything out, we're also gonna make sure it bakes in a very even and crisp layer. And we're just patting everything down really gently, spreading it out nicely. We don't wanna pat anything too hard to crush any of the nuts. Now that everything is spread out, I'm just gonna go bake in the oven at 325 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes. While our granola is baking, we wanna make sure that we're stirring it every 10 to 15 minutes so we can ensure an even and crisp bake. Spread it out evenly again. And then back in the oven we go. The secret to super crispy, crunchy, clustery granola is actually letting it cool completely before you break it apart and serve it. I know it's tempting, but just don't touch it for a little bit, okay? This granola is completely cool, so now I'm just gonna break it apart and add it to my plate. I mean, you just can't. You can't say no to this. This is crazy. Look at how crunchy. The clusters are what I live for. It's the only reason I eat granola. Like, this is the most satisfying thing to me, ever. I will break it apart, though. Just a little bit. We want to maintain those clusters though. I'll take granola over a granola bar any day. That's just me. And did you see how easy it was to throw this together? You literally just combine both your wet and dry ingredients and you've got this super delicious, one pan, amazing granola. 
And look at this bake. It's so even, so golden and crispy. Okay, it's time for me to taste. I'm waiting to dig into this cluster this entire time. Lightly sweet from the maple syrup, not too sweet, so it's a perfect breakfast companion. Or honestly, you could eat this at any time of the day. You could even top ice cream with this. It's a really nice, crisp, golden layer on top of some vanilla ice cream. Mmm, sign me up. You know what, my dad loves this recipe. I make it for him all the time. Let me send him a picture so he can be a little bit jealous. Of me in it, <laughs> so he can remember my face. He knows what I look like. <laughs> He's gonna be so jealous. Mm. So good. Speaking of my dad, this next recipe is inspired by him and something he used to make all the time. So I'm gonna go grab the ingredients and start popping some popcorn. This is a variation of a popcorn recipe that my dad used to make all the time. Poor guy, my mom, my sister, and I would always steal some before he could even have a single kernel. So I guess this is redemption for him. I'm gonna show you how to make your popcorn really delicious, really flavorful with this spice-infused olive oil mixture. So I've already popped my popcorn, and now I'm just heating my pan on medium-low heat and add a little bit of olive oil. You can use your favorite spices here, but I'm gonna use one of my favorites, which is some garam masala. This is a really common blend of Indian spices, and it's really delicious, really warming, creates a very savory flavor in this popcorn. I'm gonna add this straight to my oil, along with some cayenne pepper. This is gonna take it up a notch in the spice department because I like things very spicy. Finally, I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt. And now all we're gonna do is just stir our spices. Now the reason that we're heating the spices here in the oil is because nobody likes a raw spice. Raw spices are not cute to eat. So we want to cook the spices with the oil so they become fragrant, they become aromatic, and it just infuses a lot of flavor into your popcorn. I was so obsessed with popcorn in college, I'm pretty sure it's the only reason I made it through. I would just snack on it like all the time. It got me through my exams. Thank you, popcorn. It's done so much for me in my life. And you wanna make sure you continue to stir your spices in with the oil so it doesn't burn. We're only doing this for about a minute or so until you smell that delicious aromatic spice smell. You don't want it to smell too raw. 
When you allow the garam masala to cook in this oil, you can really smell all of those individual spices, the cumin, the cloves, the coriander. It smells so fragrant. So my spices and my oil smells really aromatic. I've cooked it for about a minute. Now it's time to just drizzle it over my popcorn. There we go. I'm just gonna shake it up so everything is fully incorporated in here. Now I'm gonna drizzle it over my popcorn. It smells so good. Now I'm just gonna toss it so that everything is well incorporated. This is just a really great way to make a flavor infused popcorn so that you're not just going with the plain salt, you're not just going with the plain butter, there's a little something extra going on. Now that my spices are fully incorporated in my popcorn, I'm gonna add a little bit of nutritional yeast. This adds a very cheesy and savory flavor to the popcorn without actually adding any cheese. that in a little bit and then I'm gonna finish with a little pinch of salt I have to show my dad that I made this it's a little bit better than his <laughs> I'm so mean <laughs> it smells so good I seriously wish you could smell it I cannot wait to dig in so I'm just not gonna wait I'm going to dig in. Oh, come on. Okay, this might be dramatic, but I don't think I can eat regular popcorn ever again. Mmm, it's so good. And again, you can use your favorite spices here. You can even do a little salt and pepper, a little garlic powder. Really make it your own, but just know that I have a feeling you will not go back to regular salted popcorn. Butter? Who is she? Mmm! It's so good. It's really good. You guys should try this. The next time you get a snack attack, all I have to say is just don't panic. Remain calm. Make these three recipes, they're so delicious and the best way to keep your days going. Whew. Hey guys, super busy, cooking up a storm, but I have something exciting to tell you. Hashtag cooking is back. So tune into today all day. Okay, I got some in the oven. I gotta go. See you later. Hey, today all day. Up next on hashtag cooking, Sama Dada is sharing her favorite ways to use up any oats that you have lying around. First up, she's baking an oatmeal chocolate chip cookie that's healthy enough to eat for breakfast. Then it's home.